button. Welcome back to Exalted 3rd Edition Dragon Bloods. Last time, the crew got together and checked up on a whole bunch of stuff across the Hundred Kingdom region. Dropped off several of Cat over in the Jade Orchid Prefecture to their new, you know, new attendants. Accepting as cats will be as they get movie. And move forward into the territory on top of the ridge, up in the rainy forest region. And proceeded down the path into examining, you know, the local territory, spotting out what would, you know, who lived there, where, why. Trying not to make too much of a disruption. And encountered a uh, outward scout from one of the, or possibly the single major lunar settlement of beast folk that Bismuth Maw helps maintain. Jatiyalir. Uh, Jatiyalir uh, spent their time with the hearth, both remembering how to socialize with people from outside of their society, and also doing some explanation of the current state of affairs in their village, how they have been viewing Bismuth Maw for a while. Uh, the short version is that the bear seems quite, de uh, quite depressed, and the village that they have helped maintain uh, is split into three disparate types of beast folk that Bismuth helped bring together to bring into a communal area of support. The clouded leopard folk, the pangolin folk, and the bee-eating bird folk. Uh, beyond that, Moat was given over as a forward spout slash hostage, as the team did not want to impose on the boundaries and the territory, uh, and just settled down on the road to make camp until they heard back for their notice. And there they would sit for about... Let's just re-measure this and make sure I had my calculation up. Uh, there would be about a week and a half of camping and probably moving a little bit, given some permission or just intention of just like moving not to be not seen, but just being, you know, going around exploring the forest. But it is by foot and not by any method of sorcery or flight or anything like that. Actually quite a trek into the forest down the bridge and then back. But the message on the return is not delivered by Jatiyalir. It is delivered um, early... Actually, I would say about mid-afternoon. Um, by a visitor. But in the meantime, what would you all be doing in the downtime? Just waiting for the word to come back and the guides to come back. An entire week of just hanging out. Being the woods. I didn't know if it had particular, mm. you know, goals, side scenes, anything else to check in. And if that's a no, I can just move on, so... Yeah, think of anything. Not off the top of my head, as I never have anything planned for Obsidian. That's all good. Uh, Angler would be fiddling with his gauntlets and getting used to looking at them to look for ghosts. So if any spirit happens to flip by or look at this crew of dragon bloods and go, "What the hell is that?" Uh, he would probably see like that uh, might be. Give a thing. me a perception awareness roll, just as a as a just a general thing to see yep. if there's anything interesting you catch sight of. I don't get a bonus to this because this is not in a huge group of people. Yes. Okay. Um, just generally being aware and using the gauntlets is kind of an excuse to keep your eye out and just attune yourself to the natural noises of the forest and what disrupts them. You start to get a good feeling for the biorhythm of the area and what is the noise that means what. You start to uh, hone in on what means danger calls from the local prey animals, you know, the sort of noises that indicate that there's maybe a larger predator animal around. And when you're looking in the gauntlets, you can occasionally catch glimpses of a couple of the local gods. Not ones that have this particular area or turf sliced out. It's 
if there is territorial boundaries out here for the gods, they are very large and probably very wiggly. So you don't see very many repeat ones. You see what looks like some larger figure covered in like bark and moss just kind of striding by that doesn't even look at you twice. It is just on some sort of patrol and you don't match whatever parameters it is looking for. Uh, meet a number of spirits just doing what look like evaluations of the flowering and fruiting plants as you are coming up towards harvesting season where it is going to be starting to die off. Probably just doing last tallies. And one glimpse you actually do get is a... what looks like a... a... Striker, the universe name, the giant velociraptor. Um, one of those, but with, like, a wolf pelt fur and some feathers alongside of it, seeming to follow behind quietly one of the clouded leopard folk, but not in a way that indicates that they are hunting the leopard folk, it's more that they're watching, like they are doing an assessment. And, uh, you can roll into cult on that one. Sure, let me remember what my occult is. I believe it's three. Yep. All right. And is that... Okay. Tell anybody else they can assist roll. Uh, uh, no, that's enough. Uh, you recognize that in a lot of Eastern... Especially Eastern direction um, mythology and references to the gods. That is the hunting hounds of... I don't remember her name off the top of my head, but it is the goddess of the hunt. And her hunting hounds are basically furred giant velociraptors, and it is generally seen as a very good omen to have them running alongside you in a hunt, so long as you immediately dedicate the hunt to her and a part of the kill to the hounds. So, it seems like this local hunter for the Lunar Village has just caught in the brief attention of the servants of the hunting god, and she basically sent out a team to just go, hey, how good is that one? And okay. yeah, Grala. Well, if I see that just... person's face, I'm going to memorize it. So if we get to the village, I can like tell them, hey, go make an offering. You get the feeling that it's a situation where they're probably, uh, like with the five successes on a cult, they will know if the, if the, if the, if Grala and the hunting hounds are giving support or pushing, but that hunter is going to know. She's going to know one way or the other, and she will know appropriately to make the offering if necessary. It's just more that you catch a glimpse of, man, she is going to have a hell of a day today if she finds something. Find it's the local just... equivalent of a moose. I mean, that would probably just be moose or similarly large elk. Propose is going to, the moment it becomes clear that this is a more than one day wait. Mm. Day two, assemble kiln. Day three through N, start <laughs> making pottery. <laughs> All right, give me uh, one die stunt on that. Just start making extensive collection of wares that will be usable as as giftware. Probably a lot of day one through five's work being examined, crushed, folded back into the grog, and <laughs> Milan protesting, and then just remembering what happened last time. And yeah, I can yeah. re-roll three non-one failures. I, I like that one. Okay, um... Repose's selection process may be rather merciless, but once Repose is getting into the actual stride of it, Milan can understand why, as the quality of what is coming out of an improvised kiln in the middle of the woods is... Something that would probably start fist fights in a, like, Sinus or, you know, Regara Gala to actually have. Day two, kiln. Day five, temporary underfloor heated accommodations. Yeah, so, uh, the goal here, you have... working off of Repose knows, ha has heard a bit about how these folks live, so he's pry trying to think about what sorts of vessels would be of use. He already is acquainted with beekeeping. He knows many bees appropriate 
shapes of earthware. So you, between you know, shaping them out and getting them lightly glazed and decorated. You would know that they have both an apiary of some considerable size and a side brewing operation for meat, so you would also know the shapes and pottery and stuff for fermentation and you know, long-standing distillation. That. So you would actually have quite a wide selection of very high-quality yeah. vessels and wares. The goal here is to produce a smaller number of very high-quality luxury. These are gifts for a leader. Yes. So, uh, stuff. Um, during the wait, uh, Milan wanted to look back through the annotated notes of Old Man's history and the books he gave to me and took took away from me that I made notes on. Mm -hmm. If there was any like possible relevant historical information of this area of the Hundred Kingdoms, if any news had come out of it in the say last century or so. Give me a... Give me a... Wits Linguistics World. It's a kind of speed read. for you, Even how you have a week, it's also 70 years of documentation. So you're doing a lot yeah. of speed reading to catch any and it's, notable it's, information. I don't have those books. I have my annotated notes I've made over the ah, yeah. course okay. of... So, yeah. Wits Linguistics still, probably. So. Yeah go through your stuff. The Bump. very, very basics of there are leopard people up here and they are very unhappy about being found most of the time are in your book. Otherwise, the only real other information is that there was some basically skirmishes and border tension back and forth between the God's Breath River and the Beast Folk out in the forest for a while until it just abruptly stopped at one point. Okay. And it, wa and it wasn't like a matter of like there was enough dead bodies or there was a big event that made it stop. It just stopped happening. But uh, on the... Uh, Probably about 10 or 11 in the morning on the day of Descending Earth 18th, there is a visitor to the camp, and you can hear them coming from the sound of chirping, actually. Like, twittering and singing bird song through the woods. A very obvious, hello, I'm making noise as I'm approaching, I am not trying to be stealthy, don't jump me, kind of thing. I will disable the landmines I have placed. <laughs> oh, uh, <coughs> this is obviously. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. I would ask um, Yang to teach me some uh, hiding skills in the forest, just because playing hide and seek sounds seems like a fun time to learn how to be better at hiding. Oh, yeah, no, they're, they're, I mean, you're in the middle of a primeval old growth forest. You have plenty of opportunities to practice. Step one, you know mud? Yes. Drink it. No. Well, you said you wanted to be hidden, so I guess you don't want to be hidden. Why not just put it on my... Do you mean drink it as, like, put it on my skin and let no, it kind of No, put it in your in? body. Hold on a sec, and Angler... Uh, let, tilt his le head to the left and like uh, pulls the skin tight on his uh, neck and shows very thin gills. That's not a good thing to get in this. So well, no, not don't slather it on your gills. Fucking drink it with your mouth. You're talking. But then it's gonna get on the inside. Yeah, that's the point. Where those gills also attach to, but on the in part. <sighs> Fine, we'll just. <laughs> I'll just, we'll just throw some leaves on you and that'll be enough, all right? Okay. Here, check this out. <laughs> you don't want the good shit, though, I guess. Baby steps. Baby steps. So, is this happening as the bird is approaching or back in the narrative job? Whichever is funnier. Um, Probably as this is happening, then. That's as an aside, the I, <laughs> we've been around them enough that I would immediately know that that's not, like, a right-on call, correct? 
Oh no, Raiton crawls are basically squawky, croaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cross between crow and lizard hissing. This is like she like. I've listened to actual bird calls from bee eaters. They're kind of like chickadees, almost, with less repetition. Very, mm -hmm. just very quick pips and chirps. So when the calls come out, Obsidian just calls back there. We do we know any birds other than Guan? We're going to visit birds. Um, the old man. This ain't old man. Maybe it's a messenger. So, we were going to visit birds. We, we were told about this. To be honest, up until literally this moment, I didn't know that bee eaters were birds. Now you do. Now I do. <laughs> In character and out. Yeah. Let's keep it that way. So, as... They mentioned birds. What? Bee eaters or birds? What? <laughs> I thought what they, did were you think they were vague, What? Vague nebulous shapes that ate bees. Oh, bears. Bears so, don't eat the bees. They eat the honey. They leave the I'm bees. sure they get some bees in the process of getting the honey. As this discussion is going on, while Angler is like, maybe a third covered in mud as... Gang is putting leaves on. Uh, there is a blindingly bright green from the neck down bird folk that shows up, um, with a patch of like bright blue from the neck up under the chin, and it's like blood red on above that for the rest of the head. With a long, thin black beak and a streak of black feathers across each eye. Um, instead of a pair of wings, they have a pair of arms that are almost entirely human and have what look like the vestigial feathers of lighted wings at some point, but are absolutely incapable of flight. Mental and... image of a bird with human arms is very powerful. <laughs> Yeah, it's the legs are also more humanly proportioned, but it is just Sorry. very much torso um, and head bird, arms and legs person. I am now just thinking about like the ducks with the whole cans on them, or like the seagulls that are flexing, like all of those images. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, Obsidian would greet them, sir, ma'am, them. Hello, sir. Good morning, Please. sir. 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 Uh, the bee eater folk uh, bows his head and kind of gestures a little bit with the arms. It is a pleasure to meet you. I am here on behalf of Jatilia and the rest of my village in order to provide a message and a guide back to the rest of our village in order to get you comfortably accommodated into our domain and assist with any services that you may need to require. Very good. Thank you. Oh, yes. Um, the feathers shift as they uh, as he moves across his waist and kind of moves some of the feathers away to show that there is a small pack uh, strapped to his waist and shoulders and hanging off his back. You could not see on the approach and kind of is reaching back to unbutton it before Moat pops up and peeks over the shoulder of the bird person and for repose it is like staring into two black holes as the eyes are completely dilated of just i have seen forever <laughs> i have seen the impossible and it is bird bird friend tall bird mo is just long bird. kind of mo takes a moment before popping out of the the, the pack and running over to Repose jumping on the shoulder and kneel, like leaning against Repose's head for a kind of reassurance of like this is really cool I need grounding I need I need normality I need to know I need to I need to handle what I just went through <laughs> firmly place a hand on Moat's back 
with the other hand, just like slip a little like falconry hood <laughs> over <laughs> the face. And then just slide him into the, the compartment on the travel mm -hmm. box. Moat goes with no protests. And, uh... Okay. Bird folk nods his head. Of all the cats that were not a member of our village, I believe that is the most well-maintained and well-behaved one I've ever met. Although my standards on that are rather low, as the rest of them are usually the uh, more predatory ones in the village that do not have the same agreements as the fellows in our village do, and they are quite rude. Propose we'll just kind of give that a bit of a hmm. And Stop on the uh, The Eater folk kind of just kind of dashes in a little too close on personal space up to uh, probably Angler and Yang in terms of catching the most attention with what they're doing. In terms of you know, spacing of body space, it's a little too close for comfort in terms of personal space, but the long beak means that it is almost poking your face, and Bird does not seem to notice nor care or maybe have a totally different sense of body space. Just kind of leaning in and looking and it's just like, what are you doing? Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Learning how to hide. Science. You look awful. You look awfully old for needing to learn how to hide. Didn't your mother teach you that when you were a chick? Actually, learned... yeah. What's up with that? You can always learn how to hide better. I suppose so. Also, what? I needed to learn how to hide in a different place, with buildings and such. There's like a visible processing moment of like, right, right. Not everything is forest. Oh, they aren't right. from wood. <laughs> right. Like, the, 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 I, I'm doing it, and I'm realizing that I can't actually convey my physical motions, but I'm, like, darting my head, like, 20 degrees right, 20 degrees left, thinking, like, looking back and forth, going, hi, hi. Bird movements. Head jerks back and kind of looks over again. What's your name? Who is that to? Yang. And that's Angler. Oh, to the both of you. Oh, okay, yes. Okay, yes, then, yeah, Angler. I was named Diaphon when I came out of the egg. How long ago was that? I don't know. Fair enough. How many winters some... have passed since then? Pause. Think. Brings up fingers, counting. More than ten, less than two tens. Okay. Teen bird. You, you... Actually, when they're counting, uh, if they were going to get to 10, I'd put my hands up right next to it so they could start counting off my fingers just to keep going. So they didn't have to, like, try to do another set of 10. There would be a look of visible appreciation with that. Um, but after giving that response, and if there is no, like, immediate follow-up question, the attention span is immediately caught by the glinting of the forge, and Diphon just kind of flicks over to look at this forge and the pottery, and it's just transfixed by, what is this? He's not vocalizing Propose, questions. It's Propose just is in turn counter-fascinated by... strange human large teen adult bird pops back up looks over to repose looks at cat kind of has a visible process of cat owner okay understood looking around okay one two, 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 two. looks over at obsidian zips over uh actually gets a little too close and kind of 
bonks the beak a little bit against the chest of the armor. There's, like, the Diaphone is probably a little over five feet tall, so it is, like, an extreme differential of height between the two of you. <laughs> then kind of looks up, beak nearly poking at your chin. Hello, you're big. Yeah, I get that a lot. There's a hey. there's a moment. Kind of looks over to the others, thinking of asking them before asking you. Are the rest of you get that big? No, nah, I'm kind of a special case. <laughs> some of us that have more blue feathers, and some of us have more red, and some of us have more green. So, some of you yeah, might kind be of bigger. the same thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Out, of, out of character. <laughs> I really want to offer this bird teen some poli- some weed. <laughs> but I don't think that's appropriate or responsible. After the bird has finished navigating. <laughs> oh. Not while the you bird is driving the convoy. <laughs> Once we are at village. There is a... Right, we can, we, we can so, suppose uh, that that exchange can happen in character of Yang, like, reaching for pouch. Yang's Propose reaching kind of, for like, popping pouch. over and giving him just a bit of a... Just a bit of a tap on the head, just no, no, wait. Not now. And, uh, crew give a read intentions with a slightly higher difficulty than normal because this is now completely unreadable by human facial expression standards and it is entirely body language. Weird bird manners that we are unaccustomed with. Oh, 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 does that charm I got apply here? Yes, actually. I'll take this with the the usual bonuses and so your usual package deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all the successes, minuses on things. I can't remember what the term is. I'll thought about intimacies head. that would tell of the truth. Oh boy. <laughs> so that's a three. <laughs> you are utterly bamboozled by the existence of this bird. <laughs> Damn, I think that's the lowest I've rolled on a read intentions in, like, the entire game. You cannot tell what her train of thought is aside from nearest shiny object, fixate. Sorry, I ate all the good rolls at the beginning of the session. Uh. I guess I'm trying, so essence non-charm bonus dice on influence rolls for animal empathy t- technique. Yep. So I guess, what would I be rolling for this? Uh, it would be with socialize with that bonus from that trick. Um. Wait, why is it with too? socialize for re-intentions? Or is perception socialized, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to be like, wait a minute. City doesn't get tens on re-intentions. <laughs> I don't fucking know, man. It is... It is difficult to parse what is going on in his head. You know, Milana spent a bit of time as Magic Bird. You know what? Yeah, you get a two-dice stunt on trying to figure this one out. All that has happened is we have met a bird. We have met one of the bird people. Mm-hmm. Ifan has probably entirely forgotten about why he's here. So you're from the uh, village? Yes, yes, it's a very nice and pleasant place. And oh, oh, right, 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 I, right, right, right. I'm taking you there. Right, I'm, I'm, right. You don't know how to get there. Right, yes. I, w- I would like to visit there. It, it sounds like a nice place. It is, it is, it is. Uh, um, are you, are you all ready to go? Um, do you have your things? Uh, we can, we can go when you're ready. And we can pack our things. What's at proposed? Gather up and stow the pottery. (laughs) Once that is... Appropriately secured and cloth wrapped. Uh, once that is done, that'll be all together. And... Devon immediately, once you all are ready and give the word, starts to sit, kind of head off into the woods at full pace, just kind of knowing the paths instinctively. And 
roll me uh, whoever is going to be Trailhead or Pathfinder. Roll me Perception and Survival to see how well you can help blaze the trail behind the bird. Okay. Not me. Got it. I mean, this is a 10 for me. Sidian, what would that be for you? A one. one? Okay, I thought so. Yeah, actually, I think I have a, a one in survival, so it'd be a two. Yang is actually quite able to both follow the kind of impulse thoughts of Diafon now that, that they are going uh, through the path together, and also just is a good tracker and has a, an this? eye for the pathways and the paths. Canonically, while Yang is following his path, in his head is going... Shit, he'd make a good Yaku man. Is that the bird man? Fuck. So, during the... Uh, it is going to be a several day long trek. Uh, slightly shorter because of your ability to give some suggestions on the pathfinding. But... During the whole trek, Diophon is kind of just chattering almost the entire time during the day, just asking questions every few minutes of each of the crew of just like, so where did you grow up? Or you know, how many, you know, how many brothers and sisters did you have? Or what's that? Like, or like pointing at something on the uh, on a party member. What's that? Or like, you know, who made that? Or what's that made of? Or, you know, what's the biggest tree you've ever seen? <laughs> the folks will very want to engage with uh, all of these questions, and I will go yeah. ahead and put forth a uh, Manip Socialize and the Socialize specialty that I've picked up in Supertext. <laughs> of just, oh, right. no, actually, I'm going to try to avoid leaving things that I would assume are conveyed without words unsaid and just be. Go um, ahead and uh, two dice down. More direct than what? usual. Would like to roll uh, charisma socialize with awkward small talk just to engage this person in conversation. Yeah, that's one die stunt on that for him. All right, so a total of six out of propose to just kind of engage, uh, I suppose, with the tangible goal of wanting to gather more bits of information about. Repose is just kind of interested in their whole general living arrangement that people have in this village. Meeting new yeah. people means chances to just see new living arrangements and new technologies and that's Milan very neat to him getting a friendly rapport with this person okay Talk, so talking about the tree in my grandmother's garden that i one time climbed as a child and fell out of he keeps complimenting those big face feathers you have he's very enamored with them yes they they are very nice i i take very good care of them uh, meanwhile, with Repose, um, the general gist you're getting out of, at least, uh, Diafon's perspective on matters is the bee eaters live in drilled out burrows, um, that the pangolin folk help make, uh, in the side of a kind of karst that is, uh, quite central, but a major fixture of the village. And they do a combination of roosting, but since they are not actually flighted and can't even glide, and there's kind of a bit of an expression of just kind of sadness and wistfulness of that from that explanation, there is you know, a lattice work up the karst that gets them into the burrows. Uh, most of the bee-eater folk are paired off into mating pairs, and most of their society is based on direct couples and either their children or their adopted uh, nestlings. And there is a social communality to a degree, but also a lot of bickering between family and family members. But it never really gets beyond the point of, you know, birds squawking at each other, like, this is mine. No, this is mine. I want that. I want that. And... You do get a brief kind of aside at one point before Diaphon's train of thought kind of pinballs away of uh, the pangolin folk seeming a little annoyed lately with the fact that the bee-eating folk have been eating the ants from their ant farms, and Diaphon seems very confused by this concept. It's, it's the snack map. That's where the snacks live.
so. Just in general, if there's other questions or things you would want to bring up, oops, grab the text and not the token. Uh, on the way to the general area. If not, it takes about... Let me double check. At some point, Obsidian would ask them if they have any sports. Do they do sports? There's a moment where you have to, like, talk around the idea of sports because sports is a word kind of just gets a what? Then, what do you do like, for fun? Or competition? Or... And would keep going, like, more oh, yeah, broader. Yeah. Once, once you get that, um, it is very much a... Oh, yeah, we absolutely do. Uh, the Pangolin folk do... Uh, basically races to see how far they can tunnel in a certain amount of time. The bee eater folks see how many bees that they can de-sting in a certain time limit uh, when they're preparing their food. There's a lot of culinary culture, apparently, because there's a lot of time spent preparing and eating when most of your diet is insects and you are person-sized, or slightly less than person-sized. Uh, and there's just a lot of creativity that goes into that, and a lot of elaborate stuff that happens. Um, and, of course, apparently the Clouded Leper folk have their own sports that are a little too hardcore for the rest of them. Occasionally they try to participate and usually get blown out. It's... most of them don't really know how to use bow nearly as well as the Leopard folk. They don't have the muscle mass needed for the bows that they have. They have their own smaller bows and they usually favor, like, you know, utensils, knives, other things for agriculture in terms of the occasional moment when the, uh the moas uh that they have on hand yeah by the hand, by the way they do keep a very small agricultural collection of moas like you know 12 Sick. foot tall 12 that, foot tall death birds that rules yeah occasionally one of them goes from you know okay with handing out snacks from the leftover kills of the leopards to deciding to eat one of the bird people and then it has to be taken down and usually it, it ends in a mass amount of Improvised violence assisted by bees. To do by Moa, return Moa to the Vigil Monastery. <laughs> Present to Chief. <laughs> Large bird. The promised land. Finally, a worthy opponent. Rejoice, brother. So it is probably at about uh, 23rd-ish of descending that you finally make it all the way to the rough location of the Lunar Village. Just over the calendar subpage, back over here. Right here is the tile of the Lunar Village, and I'll update that at some This is Primary Beast Folk Village. I don't have a sub-map on hand handy with it. Just gonna go with visual description. So, the village itself is a not entirely clear cut, but very much cut open part of the primeval forest. There are saplings that still remain inside of the ring of clear cut trees that are used for, you know, forestry and stuff like that. But otherwise, beyond the space they have cleared in order to, like, you know, maintain their area. They have tried to avoid logging too much, and in fact, there are still a lot of old-growth tall trees around. And looking up into them, you can actually see built way up high into them, like, look up like either houses or storage shacks or something. That's probably where the leopard folks spend the day, or hide their kills or something like that. Uh, down below the trees on the ground level, it is unlike more or less, like, utterly different to any village that you have seen, any of you. It is not laid out with consideration to geomancy, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like it's really going against the flow, as it only takes you a couple of minutes of uh, uh, climatization before you realize that this area is a wood domain. It's not a very powerful one, but there is an accumulation of wood essence here that is stronger than usual. And it's just everybody's natural inclinations of where to settle down is in the right way because they're just going with the flow. They're going with the feeling. Instead of buildings, the whole ground of the area is dotted with burrows into the ground itself. 
And this is probably where, uh, well, DFN would confirm, that is where the pangolin folk live, is they have an underground set of horns that the holes all connect to. Some are separated, and some are differentiated, and some are connected. And the karst in the middle is covered in small trees, in climbing vines, and rocks, and mosses, and lichens, and things like that. And it is also riddled with holes for very, very small, like, sub-studio apartment size, like, closet size, even, I would probably say, on average, uh, resting areas for the bee eaters. Um, and there are a lot of them. There are a shit ton of them. They are... So hmm? I was just going to say, so the the birds live on the ground for the cats in the trees and the penguins underground? Yeah, uh, birds live on ground floor slash in the big rock. Right. And there is very little land that has been given over to what you would define as a traditional form of agriculture. You could recognize a couple of what look like maybe flax fields or some other textile plant that you can't quite identify on site. What you would classify as most of the agricultural area is ant mounds and termite mounds. Fucking gigantic termite mounds. We're talking 20 feet tall and dozens of them in a giant set. That is clearly where most of their food is. And you can see, as the twilight hours are approaching, uh, several... Where the clouded leopard folk looked like they were at an exact midpoint between the uh, human and the leopard, and the bird folk were very much humans with a um, bird coat applied to them. The pangolin folk looked like they were just pangolins that got a little bit of human in them and then couldn't get it out. Um, they're about four feet tall and hunched over and kind of still in that pangolin wobble that always looks like they're nervously delivering bad news to somebody. Um, they have the long snoots, they have the scales. The real thing that tips the off that they are, um, like beast folk rather than just abnormally large pangolin is their digits on their claws uh, in the digits on hmm. and their snouts and their eyes have slight human features to them that are very visibly like instead of just being the usual appearance it's like oh there's there's a person in there a little bit there's a little bit of human features in there so if you had to guess they were probably just a local animal population that got blasted by the wild got turned into, you know, human-adjacent. And they are, as you were approaching, just kind of walking through the termite mounds and slurping at the mounds themselves, burrowing in and giving a look without giving it any particular bite sometimes, occasionally pouring in fertilizer, food, honey? It's unclear at this distance. Providing some sort of treatment or and otherwise just checking in on And nearby, and what is taking up most of the rest of the other cleared space on the ground, as again, most of this is not taken up by buildings, because most of them are either in the giant rock or on the ground, so most of the open space has been given over to the termite mounds, and then the giant field of wildflowers, and the dozens if not hundreds of beehives. There is what can only be described as a bone-rattling hum of bees near would, that field. Would you, would you go as far as to say it's a colossal pillar? Uh, the colossal pillar is the karst, but it's it's close. Okay. Uh, like, like, the air in the wildflower field is, like, visibly hazed with the number of bees bumbling around and going between flowers and collecting pollen. And most of the area has been cleared at the moment. There are a couple of bee-eaters, uh, probably kind of looking a little tired, going between hives, checking in on things. They have a lattice of, like, barks and twigs and um, other 
like matted material, some of the textiles to provide anti-sting measures on top of the feathers. But otherwise, they're just kind of going through and the bees aren't bothering them all that much. It seems that when they go in and eat the bees, it is usually probably they pick a beehive, smoke them all into asphyxiation as a method of cooking them, and then actually just eat this prepared food. Yeah, you don't just casually grab a snack full of bees out of the sky. Yeah, no, that is a bad way of going about it. You will, you will get your you will get your ass lit up. Um. Yeah. Uh. Actually, hmm. This is going to be a difficult roll, but if you want to make it, you can make a perception survival roll when you are looking at the field of bees. Pass. All right. <sighs> Propose will reach into, you know, various belts and pouches and extract just like a little like sliver of dried honey from just miscellaneous food supplies. Grind it down into a powder. Maybe maybe even just like rehydrate it a little. And then just leave syrup hand out in the open in the direction of the bees and see what happens. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, um, so Yang, as you are investigating, you're not really able to tell at a distance what they are. And then when Repose sticks out the hand covered in nectar and honey, and they come closer, you realize a couple of things all at once. I'm some big fucking bees, actually. Man, those are actually big bees. Hmm. And number two, hmm, like 20 millimeter long bees out in the forest, mostly pollinating wildflowers. They're giving them a lot of space. Even things with a lot of feathers on them are wearing extra protection. These are probably like the really chill if you don't mess with them, but dangerous large bees of the area. And uh, semi out of character because I'm not sure how to work this in. Uh, you know those bees that have the defense mechanisms against wasps where they just swarm the wasp and then raise their own body temperature and the wasp cooks to death? That's these bees. Huh. That's the bees that they have cultivated. I see. There is a swarm of perhaps millions of them in the air. More than enough to cover a person. These bees have the potential to be hazardous. These bees... wonder, if, wonder if Obsidian could survive it. Probably. Oh, Obsidian could almost certainly handle it. For, like, multiple reasons. I do have elemental resistance. <laughs> that I actually would bees. apply in this instance. Because it is heat. To the bee element. So, as Repose has a couple of bees land on the hand, a couple becomes about a dozen, and then a dozen becomes about, I don't know, 50. And then, oh, well, there goes the entire hand. It's covered in bees. And once yeah. the nectar is being collected and the pollen is there, they realize, wait, hand? Smell. Skin. What is this? Alert! <laughs> and you feel kind of tiny pincer jaws biting into your skin, which I'm assuming you're immediately reflexing yes. the beginning to arc. And so boost. They're not going for the sting as of yet, but you begin to notice that, wow, your hand's getting really warm. No, no scratch that hot. No, no, like, really hot. Like, oh god, ow, ow, ow! Like, until you, like, really harden it for, like, your crafting temperatures... Uh, cause, hey, these bees can get up to 45 degrees centigrade or 113 degrees Fahrenheit as an Damn. entombing mechanism. <laughs> and as they sit there and they're attempting to, like, cook your hand, there's kind of a visible confusion ripple across the swarm on your hand of just, this should be working by now. They should at least be freaking out by what? As the stop the vibrating and the escalating of the body temperature 
and just sort of detach the jaws and kind of scuttle around looking for the food again. Kind of give a gentle poke with the stinger preemptively to test the skin, find that it is rock hard. Realize that none of them have been squished or swatted or any sort of panic response, and then they just kind of start flying off all in the ball, just kind of like, well, that was fucked up. That was a pretty fucked up story. Yep. Like, Repose's hand is like soaked in sweat at this point from the heat. And he'll just wait until they have all left and then dry off. At this point, uh, Diafon has solidly kind of, okay, you're here, and I wasn't told to do next, so I'm just going to wander off, and it's kind of not forgotten you, but very much is just like, I'm just going to go check on something. Bye. And, Bye. Uh, and yeah, we're, like Yang would probably be going over towards repose with the ball of bees to make sure nothing bad was happening, and then at, at the point where they're flying away. These bees make a lot of honey. A lot of indigenous peoples across the world use the Apis Posada as their cultivated um, uh, domestic honeybee. But it also they came with complications because they are large and aggressive. <laughs> I love that art. Holy shit. Oh, that was weird. Bee hugs. The bees are happy. Bees are confused. The bees are. So bees legs are okay. At this point, your guide has just kind of wandered off and left you in the middle of the village encampment as there appears to be kind of the changing of the day cycle. Birds are diurnal pretty clearly from the looks of things and, and from your travels with Theophon. Uh, as soon as the sun went down, Theophon usually was out like a light. I am... Oh, yeah. uh, well, the pangolin folk are beginning to come out of the holes in the ground, and you can hear movement, but not see much in the trees above. We are here to meet with the heads. If they see have if any. there are problems, and to possibly inquire about uh, teeth. I'm gonna go trundle up to a pangolin and squat down, and an animal thing just ask, "Hey, um, is there like..." An authority around here? Roll me. Uh, how would I do this? Charisma, per appearance, performance. Roll me appearance, performance, please. Uh, appearance is for Yang. I forgot. Oh, he has a three. Really? Yang is, you know, moderately impactful in appearance. Yang's hot. I guess. But appearance can be either hot or notable. In, uh, yeah. I, oh, rolled, no, the I, rolled, I rolled nothing. I rolled nothing D10. Sorry, you, you my rolled, bad. Yeah, you're good. Just go ahead. There you go. Not much better. Obsidian would so ask So you squat proposal. down by the pangolin folk and you say hey and there is just an immediate snap response of the legs jump up, arms curl inwards, and entire body curls into ball and flops on the ground. Before even looking at you, just like bam! Unexpected noise. <laughs> I will right. wait for like ten seconds. Say apologies. I forgot. Ball uh, slightly uncurls as an eye kind of looks out. Blink once. Completely confused, but no longer feeling threatened. Of blink just, once what? for like go away. I don't want to deal with this. Blink twice for all right. Blink, blink. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, do you have a chief? There's just kind of a blank, uncomprehending stare at that. Who's the coolest dude around? Still uncomprehending stare. You know, I, I don't know why I thought this would work, but thank you for your time. The ball slightly uncurls as the kind of hands are, like, 
wrapped up against the chest and kind of leaving the claws in and out. And you notice to yourself, like, those claws could probably just kind of hook into the front of your ribs and pull down and you would just be open. But that is clearly not even crossing this pangolin provokes mine of as as uh, she looks at you and it's just like I mean I won't choose violence if you won't I am visitor oh yes 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 Chatea Lear Chatea Lear well, mentioned uh, we would be having human visitors I I didn't know what a human looked like. Propose will just kind of like shuffle up into Yang's periphery and lean in close to like dramatic stage whispering distance of speak as he would normally. Hey, should we be somewhere or can we just go wherever we feel like? That gets a moment of thought. I... Mm -hmm. speak with the leopards for that i believe i i'm i that's not what i do i mean that's fair we just want to get our bearings and you've done a great job of that so far thank you and then, and then actually because this was my thought transitioning almost seamlessly a different human obsidian walks up and goes to repose hey you want to go talk to the cats <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to turn around and go. I think we ought to go talk to the kitty cats. Yes, eventually. And the pangolin just kind of rears back all the way up, looking at Repo like uh, at Obsidian, just kind of like arcing almost as back as she could go. Just like, holy shit. I am going to, <laughs> as nicely as I can, <laughs> ask the pangolin, would you like uppies? Confusion? Do you want to be big? No, that sounds frightening. It is. Or things you're wise, seen. and you're wise to not choose it. Congratulations, you passed my test. You this passed my, my size puzzle. Uh, one last thing, if, if you would, <laughs> if you would spare a moment. Just, just one last thing. You, just, just one more thing. Uh, do you use uh, Darth and Wes for for anything? Just to, like take out and demonstrate one of the. Uh, Oh yeah. I'll, Eyes I'll, immediately I'll begin pods. shimmering and the arm the hands just kind of reach out very gently to like pull the fingers all the way out to bend the claws out around so they're not scuffing the thing as the hands cup to receive it. This is beautiful. How oh, the penguins play into it. Hold vase. Yeah, repose will just Gentle. kind of you know, you know, shyly recoil and vibrate and smile. He thanks you for the compliment. She nods her head. Yes, yes, we do use things like this and immediately goes back to hand it back to you. Yes, I have brought a few of these as gifts for any who would appreciate and make use of them. Get, get... Uh, oh! Oh! Gently pulls back and starry-eyed again, looking at it. This would be so good for pickling. Are you sure? Uh, the pangolin seems really smitten with this cup. I, I, yeah. It's cool if it has it, right? Such things belong where they are needed. If you would have use of it, then it is yours. All right, we'll give him a, a penguin a family thank heirloom. You, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Go in peace. Immediately just kind of fast waddles off towards the ant farms. Now there's a good egg. This is Anyways. part of his job as an earth monk. He does charity. <laughs> just makes things and gives them to people. So yeah, um, they, there are some ladders and some accessible climbing stuff on the big trees that lead up to the leopard stuff. It is clearly an afterthought because the leopards are expected to just go up and down the damn things themselves, but they know that, that they have the 
characters from the bird folk and the pangolin folk. So there there are ways up. Pangolinda? <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, no, her name's Pangolin. No, I, I, I don't make rules. <laughs> Climbing the ladders to go visit the cats. Okay. Um, so there's just. Actually, this is a legitimate thought I just had because this sort of thing has not been an issue or has come up that many times. Are these ladders obsidian sized? <laughs> yeah, actually, probably not. yes. Actually, yes, because the leopard folk are rather large and dense in muscle. Okay. Like, you are really briefly worried for a moment before you test your weight on one of the lower rungs and realize, oh, right, they're also really heavy. Okay, yeah, this is probably okay. It was like, I literally had a thought of, like, wait, no, like, an oh, obsidian right. is very large them. and wide. He probably can't use, like, normally sized like, it's, it's, things. It's kind of cramped to get your arms and legs in, but in terms of supporting your weight, it's fine. It's just a little awkward to shuffle up. I'll go. I'll. You guys go first. It's gonna take me a little bit longer to get up there. <laughs> okay, so, would anybody stay on the ground, or would all of you go up first? Okay, Mulan has gone up. Okay. I'll assume that everybody has gone up on the setup. Yeah, I, I think we're all. Uh... Yeah. So, as you climb up, it is quite a climb. It is multiple building stories tall. These, you've been in the east for a while, and you know there's one thing to sail past a forest for obsidian, or to walk past some of the woodlands on the lowlands for the others. Being in one of the rainforests of the east makes you realize, wow, trees get fucking big. Trees get really big. Whoa. And it, like, actually takes you a solid couple of minutes to climb the ladder all the way up. Yeah, like, Snake Eater in the background levels. It's just like, God, how far does this go? Until you get up to past but at first you think, oh, that might be an inhabited building, and then you look at it, and it's like, no, wait, that looks like a smokehouse. Go up, oh, wait, no, it looks like a warehouse. Uh, no, that, okay, way up here, way where it's secure. That's a house, that's a house-ass house. That's got, like, a chimney in it and stuff. Most tall place is where people live, yes. <laughs> yes, most tall, cats. Right where the branches are starting to be like, eh, maybe we shouldn't be building heavily support structure things on it. Like, right on that line of where it starts to get questionable is where they live. And of course, there are smaller structures and lookouts and personal nap spots higher up, but this is where, like, the most habitation is. And as you get up this high, you're also much more able to notice that there are, like, wooden slat and rope bridges across the trees way up high to get from tree to tree at this area without having to climb all the way down and then climb all the way back up. So, as you get up... You notice immediately that there are, there. first of all, you don't see anybody, which gives you an indication, but second, when you start to see the few people moving around and kind of giving you a double take as they pass by, uh, Biafon and Jatelia were right in that. There are far fewer leopard folk in this village than there are pangolin folk. folk. This is... Hey, I am going to uh, fire off a charm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the answer is... Probably, but yeah, I don't get to use this one too often. Uh, let me just get the exact name of it here. I think this is the one I have. Hold up, I need to check my actual character sheet. <sighs> This is social uh, Watching the saloon shadows of uh, how many of these cats are trying to get a read on us as we are just walking in. Every single one. Okay. 
Yeah, that's what I figured. Just wanted to get that confirmation. You are probably the first people to come here in at least a generation. The first, you know, human-shaped people. And they're all just like, what in the hell? Uh, uh, you are We're sighting of the nun folk. Where's your feathers? Where's your? Why do you just have your skin on out there? It's gotta be. What's your gimmick? Right? Why don't you look like something else? Doesn't the sun burn that? Don't you get cold? What's your gimmick? Well, that guy's huge. I get his gimmick. What about the rest of you? Okay, that one has some weird hair coming off its lips. I think that one is some sort of crawfish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is that a catfish? That's That might be a catfish, man. Meanwhile, the one with actual gills is just kind of chilling in the back, not getting noticed. You can't really see them. They're underneath his uh, mm -hmm. yeah. multicolored uh, skin sections where it's turquoise and black. Some yeah. sort of Yaku man. So, well, I suppose we'll, after finishing climb and reaching platform level, and you know, you know step an appropriate distance away to clear space for other people coming up, then just stop, stretch, yawn, vaguely stare off into the distance, check on Moat. Moat is extremely like. Moat.exe has crashed from enjoyment and is needing to reboot. Just level of like tall. Oh. Okay, Milan is good in having climbed all this way and is not is not lying on the floor gasping for breath. Good to know. Milan is uh, actually feeling okay. Uh, the training sessions with old man paid off. I'd like to think that old man just like everybody climbing the ladder and just uh, old, old man, man just keeps going. Yeah, old man just went like get a get long and just extended up. <laughs> old man extruded <laughs> the full way up the tree. <laughs> Goes up, 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 and it's just keep, keep is still going up until the branches are able to hold his weight, and then just is on the tallest possible branch. It's like I win finally. Old man isn't on any of the structures; he is just standing outside. Yeah, you just kind of look at him and you double take. It's like, where's the platform under? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna decide that I'm Yaku, man. You use, you're wearing the mask right now? Yeah. Feel free. Okay. Uh, I think there is a limit on stilts, but in the terms of comedy purposes, it's whatever. Yeah, outside of combat, like, man, who cares? <laughs> So long as you are not breaking something and making a shortcut that I don't like, I will let you do things. But otherwise, the... Eventually, one of the... I will put folk... some dice to that level of public, loud, visual, nonchalance and disengagement. Mm -hmm. The minute presence, the escalation. And yeah, we'll, we'll say there's two successes on this off the excellency. Or a clean five. Just okay. establish initial relaxed mood. I'm just a guy on a day. Okay. Uh, at one point, one of the cat folk approaches. Uh, she's wearing more officious looking clothing than Jatia Lear was. Uh, less of a hunting outfit and more not quite like party outfit energy for reposes, but more Relaxed at home, not on guard duty, not hunting, able to wear luxury clothing that we have out here. Feeling. She kind of gives repose a look and a blink before looking away, looking back. So you were the ones that Shatia there mentioned? Yes. Well then, I bid you welcome to our little village. Is for Holy. And may I get your names? I am, uh, Obsidian Shield. 
I am Milan. Angler, nice to meet you. A pleasure. She looks back over uh, at the rest of you. I had heard that you had come on business seeking our elder, or perhaps to see us. It was not entirely clear. Jatiolir was rather taken aback by such a such a open communication between our folk and yours. Not a common one. So the, the, the question there hanging is just, why are you here? Well, for one small note, do, uh, do any of you use earth, earthenware just to take out another of the of the sample <laughs> gifts? Uh, Coley takes a look at it, just kind of leans in to examine it. Whiskers kind of poke at it a little bit before leaning back out. Fine quality wares would be certainly quite good for storage, although I believe our fellows would be making more use of them in their own crafts. They do considerably more pickling and brewing and long-term storages that require earthenware storage. We prefer smoking the cuts that we reach. Yes, there was some excitement on the subject on the ground. Ah, I suppose, then. You likely met one of the... kind of looks at it then looks at you. Anglon, likely? The armored boys, yes. That actually kind of gets a, a brief kind of, again, briefly alarming showing of teeth before it is like, oh, that's a human smile, not a cat bearing teeth expression and small laugh of, I suppose that you could call them that, yes. But uh, I must compliment your craft work, but I believe that they would be better served by having a guest options. And should there be any remaining and that you would see fit to give to us, we would not say no. Of well, perhaps. Kind of a very slight flick of the tail at that, just kind of repressing, like, I, I do kind of like that, though. <laughs> well, perhaps by the end of my visit, I will have found some more appropriate token of response to your hospitality. Ah, well, you honor us and you honor us. Now then, honored guests. I believe this would be more pleasant for you in a enclosed space. I am taken to believe that we are uncommon in our comfort being so high up believe that it is usually a response to look down and feel fear? It depends on the person. Shrug. Well, in case that may cause discomfort, I shall take you to just gestures to one of the buildings, somewhere where you may not have a moment of fear. Just kind of leads the way, claws... You know, not able to fully retract because large predatory cat even as person just mm -hmm. clicking against mm -hmm. the wood slats as she leads you towards one of the larger lodges. As we walk in, said you would say something along the lines of, yeah, our kind, our, you know, our balance is not quite as good and falling is less than preferred. <laughs> Yes, there have been accidents with our own folk as well, so we're standing. I have never fallen in my life. Lily kind of looks back at Yang. Three intentions on Yang. <laughs> like it's, it, it, it's a non roll read intentions of just looking back, just that vocal language sounded like. A, 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 the intent, it, well, yeah, he's already run the re intentions check. Basically, the intent is 
I have, but I will go to any lengths to rules lawyer my way out of saying I've fallen. Right, so no, it's, it's just very much a look of like, are you are you being serious or okay? Okay. You're Gang, serious. I've seen you fall sideways. That's not falling. You didn't lose any distance. Yes, you did. Nope. No, I didn't want to fall sideways. I would, I, would, I, would, I would agree. Falling, falling sideways, would not that be a leap? Mm hmm. It was an uncontrolled leap, I'll grant you, but it was a leap. She, Went as you had three walls. Yeah. She actually kind of stops and looks back at you like that. Wait, what? Uh huh. Three walls. It was still, I leapt through three walls. Visible stare of like of the of the six of you. You making that statement is probably the least likely one she would have expected, except maybe Milan. Of just like, okay, don't judge on appearances. Got it. Humans, tiny ones can do weird shit. Got it. Propose probably starts mumbling along, not caring whether or not anyone whether anyone is focusing in and listening, explaining that the walls in question were much thinner and lighter and talking about construction <laughs> methods. <laughs> would also fucking nagging the Imperial City construction codes. <laughs> would also lean over from what I've heard was not his own ability that was the propulsion. You have no legal way to prove that wasn't on purpose, and my lawyer will hear from you. There's a brief look at confusion at the word lawyer before deciding that this is some sort of interhuman discussion that is just not worth getting into before entering the lodge. And the lodge itself, when you get inside, first thing that strikes you is the overpowering smell of smoked and spiced meats. And not necessarily in a bad way, it smells delicious, but like... More or less every hanging rafter is having some form of cured cut or sausage or something hanging from it. Mm. And <laughs> it looks like it is mostly prepared, as several of them look like they have been cut into and eaten partially. Um, this is like most of the stuff that is probably actively cooking and curing is probably out in the smokehouses, and this is just like, if you want snack, this is just, it's roof snacks. Sidian would take a deep inhale. Just, mm, nice. Feel free to eat. I know you've been having a long journey. Milan is going to take a bit of smoked meat and bite. Rose will briefly, very carefully retrieve Moat from storage, bring Moat within biting range of roof snack. Moat hangs, dangles, looks towards Gigantic Cat to see if there is permission to steal food from Gigantic Cat. And there is just kind of a kind of a eye blink, and then chomp, and then hanging from the meat, and then the sensation just like uh, 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 tougher than I thought. Gotta pull, gotta pull. Help, boss, pull me down. Give him a little help to just peel away a section, and then yeah, place like, uh, you moat and prize pull. back into storage. You just gently pull a ribbon of like. You're not sure what that is. That's a really big leg of whatever that was. Uh, meanwhile, just takes out. I uh, obsidian would just take out a knife, slice yeah. off a piece. No, oh, yeah, obsidian. Sorry. Obsidian would know what this is by experience by being on campaign. Milan, only uh, only witchcraft to see if you recognize what this is. All right. Anchor will take a piece as well. Actually, come to think of it, who's we know Obsidian's super tall. Are we all roughly the same height? Uh, it, 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 that just popped in my head when you mentioned the size I, of the characters. I would be, he, he would of... be he, he would be like gestured to like they are they are dangling within grabbing range of Obsidian and Leopard size. You can just grab a footstool or something. Hey gang. I am doing mental genre right now to try and figure out if it would be rude or not to give them catnip and thanks. I mean, you could also roll, like... so, Like something socialized? Like, it would be, like, maybe wits more or socialized to think of how that would be responded yeah, to do, society. Do some kind of reading of the room. Yeah, I, would, I would suggest up front, given the sort of drug it is and that it is like you know very easily wafted 
that you yeah, probably a, don't bust that out unprompted. You, you would at least discuss yeah, That is a very pungent airborne stimulant. <laughs> I, although it would be very Yang to walk into, like, a new society and just wonder if he should throw a bag of cocaine on the floor <laughs> and just let it air burst. Here's a housewarming gift. Boosh. And here's a vaporizer to throw it in. Boosh. Okay, I got a five on. Is it okay to just be like, do you want the drugs? Eh, maybe wait a few hours to get to know him before you give him the drugs. You don't have any idea what their views on mind-altering substances are. Smash cut to Yang being thrown from the tree. Like, you have literally no idea what this culture's social mores are. <laughs> Yang yeah, would maybe survive so being thrown out of the tree yeah. multiple well, yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Could Emotionally, be a, no. It could be a, a killing insult, it could be a best friend, this could be you're accidentally proposing to them, you don't know. I'm just gonna partake of the meat and think. Instead of maybe causing an international incident. Okay, um, Milan, you're not sure what this is. It's really gamey, it's really tough, but in a way that now that it has been cured and hanged and smoked is edible. It's very chewy, it's very strongly flavored. It is, you can tell now that the spices are to overpower the really gamey kind of musk flavor in it. Obsidian takes a cut, eats it. Oh, that's Megaloceros. That's like giant Megaloceros, the giant, like prehistoric gigantic elk. Yeah, they just have cuts of that hanging around. No, oh, that's as the chat put it. Oh, that's elk too. Yeah, it it is the you know how deadly normal elk are. Imagine one of them that's like even bigger and like more angry. I'm gonna compliment them on their on their spices. It is very flavorful. Yeah, it's actually quite well balanced and is probably local flavoring and maybe some of the, maybe a bit of trading. You, you can kind of taste what, like, kind of tastes like black pepper, and that doesn't grow near here very often. They get a nod from Obsidian of just, like, wordless, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's there, is a, there is a smirk across Rahuli's face as she's just like, yeah, you bet, <laughs> yeah, you would like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is good. Repose can see the is happy. Repose is happy. Yeah, there are... Just very quiet and half feral, just you know, noises of devouring within Moat's box. <laughs> Chomping, rumbling. Um, uh, the other cut that, um, with the information from your guide, you can immediately recognize is wow, that looks like a big ass fucking turkey Lego. That's probably a Moa, then. That's probably Moa. So, like, most of the other cuts that are not, like, hanging cuts or sausages are probably as, again, elsewhere. This is just available snack. <sighs> but. So, y'all take a seat. Um, there is a fire lit, and it is a little on the side of uncomfortably warm for most people in the room, aside from Obsidian and maybe Repose. Not quite bad, it's just at light warm. And there's a fire in a room that is also in the jungle. Mm -hmm. There's probably a bit of humidity happening as well. Yep. Um, instead of big stand up chairs, there is mostly kind of bundled up nesting material sewn up in textile, just kind of as kind of like cushions or bags and roughly settles down on one of them near the fire kind of kneeling down on her digitigrade legs before crossing them and um, having sliced off a chunk of the megaloceros as herself and beginning to just kind of bite and chew off of it. So I understand you had pre-existing business. So, <sighs> and for once, there is an almost repose level of like pause and hum and awe, or... from like obsidian of like how 
the we got here, and I found a lot of time to think about this, but how the hell do we reach the subject of tea? Repose will uh, just kind of with with a bit of a little audible click shift forward, having also you know sat down by the fire, and you know voice appropriately low but carrying enough force to be carried, just, just conveying that yes, I I'm speaking of things that. You know, being demonstratedly not loud. Yeah. We are acquainted with your guardian beast. There is a small nod of that. Awful. We briefly crossed paths when our Earth became aware of and went to confront an incursion. The wild some ways to the south of here. Such so a leader was right, and you were the ones who cleaned the wild. Cyst. Yes, the, uh... Actually, this is an out-of-character thing. Would referring to it as the tree be a proper classification in the way that Obsidian sort of just uses very vague terms? I mean, that's how... Obsidian would probably know of it. Yeah, what happened inside there was mostly tree. Yeah. Yeah. So he would refer to it as yeah, yeah the the tree, the the problem, the dome. We could, we could probably break the ice a bit by sharing an appropriately uh, restrained tale of wood incident. So as the tale goes on, and there's the fight against the Raksha. Uh, Huli is very much intently listening to that part of the, the hunting down and fighting of the fair folk that had been stranded or possibly generated. And then the seeking of the quarry and then a look of confusion, anger, and disgust at the description of the, you know, corrupted elemental guardian at the bottom. And then... You probably leave out most we, of the We details, leave out but... things to do with Oak. Yeah, the personals. We talk about, like, the traversing of the wild and how bizarre that was. Mm -hmm. It was like a river that wasn't a river. You were quite brave for going so deep into such treacherous... I was going to call them such treacherous depths, but... Dude, that, that nature. No, no, go ahead. F finish your thought first. The wild makes such decisions irrelevant. Obsidian would just give a very simple response of, mm -hmm. it was a problem. The problem has, has to be dealt with. It was causing well, harm to the people around it, and that's not, that's not, not a, a thing that needs to stay around. A mentality that would make you fit in quite well with us says simply. And having concluded that tale, Repose can kind of uh, buzz a little and then wind up and uh, resume a dress that for my small part I would if it is appropriate and fitting and convenient. I would apologize to your guardian. In the times immediately following our victory over that incident, I was at less than my usual level of formality and composure, and in retrospect, I realized that some of my address towards him may have been unbefitting of the occasion and of his personage. At the time, I simply took his reactions to my proposal, like, to skip over wanting to assign any word to, to acting casually. Mm -hmm. As the simple resumption of his own 
territorial claims as protector of this land, as this is right. But in light of further news, you'll kind of trail off. Yeah. Uh, kind of kind of leave unspoken, but wordlessly express the we've we've heard your uh we we have a sad bear. Uh, read intentions on Rahuli from the room. Oh wait, where is my window for roll twenty? There it is. She's gone quiet all of a sudden. Uh, so that's six with the usual. Okay, six, five, three. Okay, Milan don't make it. Angler and Obsidian do. Uh, uh let me... so Obsidian and Angler, if, in case you have different angles you are looking into, what are you trying to get out of? All right, there's a three. R uh, just any... Trying to read the reaction to the, uh, mention... Just, like, what is their opinion of Bear? There we go. I'm specifically looking to see where their eyes flick to to know where Bear's current habitation spot is. Ah, 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 clever. Uh, okay. Um, I'm not going to uh, make you roll to triangulate that. The eyes are flickering out towards the window, towards where the karst would be, maybe past that, maybe underneath, maybe somewhere in that direction. Um, as for Obsidian, the response is a, just a very kind of quiet, awkward thinking of, I appreciate the pretext of you saying that you might have offended him. You know, and I know that's not why he's sad. Also, if you wake him up and you say that's the reason, that's probably going to end badly. There is no pretext in this repose. Re remember, at the time... To, to remind, Repose actually like wildly whiffed reading of Teeth's intentions and just kind of went with an assumption at the time. He, he is honestly right. realizing right. retroactively that he misinterpreted the intensity of uh, Teeth's reaction to just being told, hey, so by the way, there's this hand man who's, who's an asshole and I hate him. And, uh, right, 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 right. Okay, yeah, no, no. Then Redcon that to be has like, since okay, I get connected that dot. And there is some real intensity behind. Uh, I have been rude. I have, per I may have caused harm. And also specifically, so her, her though, changed. Uh, specifically with my reintentions, it was, I was trying to gauge the leopardman's opinion of teeth. Like, what does he, or, or they, they, he, she? I don't think we actually got she, a gender. Uh, she. Rahuli is a woman. Uh, trying to specifically get her opinion of teeth. Deep veneration and respect combined with acknowledged but almost never shown frustration. Like, they're frustrated with teeth? Her, her specifically, okay. I would say. Yeah. Like, she deeply respects him, deeply venerates him, deeply holds oh, high, him in extremely high regard, but there is a part of her that's like, come the fuck on. But that is a part that probably should not be publicly acknowledged. That is, that is the not... words that you say inside in, in their opinion. Yeah. But yeah, Repose yes. is very locked on and it reposes for shifted into his attitude as a professional rather than as a vague conversationalist of like yeah so i've i've offended your god and i understand as a professional how many layers are involved in the procedure she of dealing sighs. with important people i am hey there's a diplomat sitting in front of you who has made a mistake and is visiting now As an representative, as official as that may get, and as fluid as that may get as a position of the Bismuth Maw that devours the wild, I must express gratitude for your understanding of the mistakes and transgressions and your intention to rectify them. However, I 
the last he went to sleep, he made it abundantly clear that he did not want to wake up before he saw fit to wake up unless the situation was sufficient urgent. And I am unsure whether an apology would count as urgent in his mind or if it would only uh, I did not catch all of that. You uh, cut in and out a little bit. Oh, basically what she said was she is grateful for that in her position as a representative slash kind of semi-representative fluidly with the rest of, you know, the village. And, but she does not know if waking him up for an apology would make him happy or make him really annoyed because when he went to sleep he was very direct about don't wake me up unless this is urgent hmm so might hmm. might help might make him more annoyed and she does not know hmm I do I just step? Do you just press the button? Do I just uh, press? I don't think the... we need to press the loudest button yet. We can... Oh, there not are still the, steps to be not had. the outrageously loud button, but well, as, as far as an immediate hey, so why are you here? We can. Uh... I think the button I'm saying this out of character before hitting it, yeah. uh, mainly because I want the opinion of the rest of the crew, right? Uh, before I press this button of. Did he mention what he would be waiting for to wake up for? He, uh, out of character response would be, what she said was, don't wake him up. You All right, was that, a cut, was that a cut out yeah, again? I heard, a, I heard a cut out at, don't wake him up. And the music has stopped. Uh -oh. That is probably a disconnect. Darren may have fallen out of the call. Interesting. I hate to see it. Oh, you heard him. Don't wake him up. Don't. I guess, I guess it's oh. over. Campaign over. And so they didn't. <laughs> what if we just live here? I mean, it's a really nice house. Don't. And then the sniper shot goes off. Don't what? No. Uh, well, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. yes. Hello. Okay. Uh, brief technical issue. Uh, Alice wandered under my table and accidentally stepped on the extension cord power strips of Earth. Ah, off ah the classic. So yes. my computer just turned off completely. So it's it's yes. rebooting, and I'm gonna have a moment. <laughs> <laughs> she was Alice. just kind of nosing around, following a cat toy, and stepped on the turn off all the electronics on my table button. Bathroom break. Yeah, this is a get up stretch. Uh, I will be back in a second once my computer turns all gets back. Uh, I'll be Yeah, I guess stand up and move around for a while. I'll step away a moment and be back. Hi, right, it's old man. Old man, hello. My my brain has finally been connected onto the 
a magical Lethernet. Finally got a signal out here on this very tall tree. Yeah. Old man stole the stole the storyteller's internet connection. It's really the worst possible outcome. Oh, rough. <laughs> uh, Alice stepped on Darren's uh, Ethernet uh, power cable. Oh, so cat it really is fine. Can't press the button. How's your internet? Everything okay over there? Yes, I have complained about it. <laughs> okay. So the uh, I don't know. Maybe this will be solved. We'll see. Ah, I'm back, and I see we have another one. Yes. It's not an old man. Old man. Old man who... Uh, so we're currently... I don't know if you were listening to the session at all. I could not. Yeah, okay. Fair. I, I mean, I guess I could have, actually. My phone probably could have brought it up, but I don't want That's to fine. use the... But anyway, you know, uh, we are currently in the Beastman area. We are in the the part that is the the uh, the leopards, which are treetop dwellers. Old man has extended the geta to the point that he is still geta on the ground, but is in <laughs> the head level with the treetop. That is our current head. I mean, he could also just you know get onto the trees. That's okay. Trees are legal. I know, but this is funnier. They point out these are one of those giant primordial forest trees. It's big. It's big. Yeah, like it. We are talking handsomely sized redwood size of big. Big. Okay. Fair. Particularly harmonious trees, then. Yeah, it's in a wood domain as well. Sounds nice. Was crew has met Bird and is now talking to Cat about Bear. Okay, I feel caught up. My cat's pressing up against me. Beware, apparently that can cause issues with the internet at this point. Whoa. Hello, Whoa. I have returned. So? Cannot believe the fate intervened to allow time for the return of old man. Yeah, I'm no. pretty entertained by my cat's timing as I was thinking about calling for a bathroom break in a couple of minutes after the conversation and then just, boink, there goes my computer. <laughs> And Alice then, didn't get a shock or anything from doing that, right? Oh, no, she's just, um, it's like that toggle switch on any, ex um, you know, extension strip outlet thing that just turns off the connection. She just stepped on that one. She was walking around. She's fine. Like, she didn't even know she did it until I kind of looked down and then she looked back up at me like, what? Cat knows exactly what it's doing at all times. Cat is the guardian of a uh, bear. Cat is protecting Bismuth Maw from the party. Cat, friend of bear. <laughs> Drop the hot secrets of Bismuth Maw. And Alice is just like, no. Let's get them up. I'll see. Green. Go. Yeah. Huh. Kind of surprised this is the first time something like that's happened in these, considering how long we've been going. Morgan was, yeah, we were gone for five minutes. Did you miss much? You missed Alice stepping on the uh, turn off the extension power cord switch on my extension cord and <laughs> having my computer turn off and in mid sentence of a dramatic moment. And me needing to get on phone discord to explain that and then having a quick bathroom break happen after that so as all my computer turned back on right, alice so knows exactly what she did when we have everyone back we can resume here okay so i believe that's, that's everybody uh give me one moment i'm responding to a text and i'm oh, sure yeah. my brain doesn't work
Okay. All right. Okay. Jeez. All right. So in the chaos and all that, I actually forgot the sentence I was in the middle of. So if you could remind me. Uh, what did Bismuth did Law say? With, uh, asking if Bismuth had right. given them any warnings about. Right, he said, don't wake him unless it is extremely urgent. So it Did he is... give any examples of disasters that might be uh, a Basically, if, if you need a waking lunar to be up and helping you or consulting on something, then you can wake me up. Uh, like, he didn't give in a specific example because he assumed that it would be generally understood by the village as it is. And it is to the extent of what he meant was basically, if I... If there is a Raksha coming in and starting shit, if there is a creature of darkness, if there is a particularly large and angry super elk, if there is a village dispute that I need to uh, talk over, if this is like a possible way that this village ends while I'm asleep, then wake me up. Otherwise, please don't. If five dragon blooded and a sorcerer show up and decide to burn the town down. Honestly, a five dragon blooded and a sorcerer show up might actually count as okay. I would like to know about that. Like, is the thing like that is that is a possible angle to go with? Is like, I mean, we're here. We want to say something to him, and we also have news about the apps that he'd be interested in. That might that might count as enough to make him not. He, he'll probably still be grumpy, but not like angry. All right. Well, we well, know how to wake up Ismith. Good. Let's. Also uh... I don't want to well, wake up I Bismuth. Have, uh, yes, I have angles to uh, <laughs> to proceed with here. So again, my intention was to ask if uh, he has a point at which he's going to wake up. Is this a hibernation as in... I am sleeping until a time at which I will awake and what that time is, or is he? If he's got a timetable, he didn't let anybody. Oh, okay. I think the, uh, the out of character assumption was, I don't want to be in the world right now. Oh yes, I know. Yeah, I wanted to know if they said if, these are the people. Oh, yes, yes. Outside, yes, now we're, we're asking about it now that we're here. Yep. Yes, With outside of you know Ruby for yeah. various reasons. Of, these are not... these are the people that are the closest to business. I see. Yes, With yes. Confirmation of yeah, no, he doesn't give time. He goes to nap for independent, indeterminate amounts of time. He just does now and. He didn't used to do that, and we worry about that now, kind of thing. Mm. I figured as much, honestly. Just wanted to know that the people closest to him, maybe he had said something else, but I wanted to see that this is more or less the same as what we heard. It is entirely possible he doesn't know when he wants to wake up. So, Ruin, you mentioned that you had an angle to propose? That, well, for one... That Repose would offer that perhaps the best way to atone for his prior offense would be would be to allow to uh, be sure there is no reason to interrupt his rest to allow him to take the time he needs. And this would proceed to segue into, okay, hi, you have the attention of Traveling Monk. Traveling Monk has his Traveling Monk report about monster bullshit. So, the thing we spoke of that we encountered in the tree. Dark. The, the no, darkening. The, yes. We have killed another such thing this year. And there will be two more. 
At this time, we do not know the specifics of what forms they will take, presumably of mockeries of fire and air. We do not know where they are likely to fall. But when such disasters are evident, they stri will strike. They can strike anywhere, at any time, and all peoples suffer equally. So, for my part, I felt it was important to become in contact with all peoples of the region with whom I do not normally speak. So that, perhaps, by exchange of what we have learned and what you have learned, some insight might be gained into the There is to the nature deep, of this year's misfortunes. There is a deep exhale and thought about that. We have been troubled a little by enemies of the world, nestled as we are within the forest. Few threats to us are of the land zone making. Occasionally, a god or elemental that has grown hostile and acquisitive needs to be put in its place, but nothing like what you have described. Nothing like that has darkened our horizon. There is a visible moment of deep thinking. He wouldn't... Even without a read intentions roll, there is a very visible moment of my mouth wants to say something that culturally I should not, and I have license to in front of the people that are not, but right now it's just like, mm, mm, should not be having this thought. I'm gonna oh. read intentions minus the uh, the usual, you know, uh, tie with a negative. Yeah. Hey, what is that thought? It's four. I'm gonna use a willpower and make that five. He keeps acting contradictory in ways that keep being at odds with how he usually responds to a threat. There are moments when he's been awake in the past year or so where he seems convinced that something bad is going to happen, but also is not, like, and then is kind of, like, patrolling or thinking or double-checking things or is very present. And then there are moments where he just retracts and hides and secludes himself and sleeps, and he doesn't do that unless he's confident that nothing will happen. Or maybe that he doesn't want to see it, or, like, it's this maelstrom of, like, why is he, why is he like this right now? What, what is going on in his head? Why is he having so many differing responses? What, is, what does he know that we don't? What is... What is he thinking about that is right or wrong that we are not? And this mention of this possible impending threat of two strange, mutilated, evil elementals is making her think maybe it's them? What? Maybe that's what's gotten spooked. But then why would he be asleep? If he was spooked by something, then he would be being extremely territorial. What if he, maybe he's tired? Maybe that's why he said only to wake him up when he's urgent, because he knows it might happen, but he wants to be... It's that 
you can almost see that loop going on behind her eyes as she's just kind of paralyzed. Oh. Obsidian to himself. Not out loud. And of course, not to the hearth. Being the only person to cancel monsters. Anyway. <laughs> said you get a phone. Uh, Obsidian took flaw, no phone, minus one. Anyway, just, uh, uh, she doesn't know. <laughs> As the entire hearth extremely knows why he does not want to be awake, mm -hmm. even though there is a threat. She mm -hmm. does not know. <laughs> Just the incredible... Ah. She does not know, and I am not in a place to say it. Yeah. Just the sheer awkward feeling over Hearthnet emotionally probably gets across what Obsidian just thought of. Angler wants to speak up here. Um, is there any place he uh, patrols particularly often before he went to sleep? Perhaps he had some premonition, but couldn't quite put a paw on it. Thanks to herself again. She didn't really only maintain the boundaries of the domain itself. He was not one to particularly roam lately. He did for a while, then was mostly focused on the local area. Occasionally he would wander a couple of miles out, and before he used to wander the whole forest looking aggressively for things, but lately seemed much more intent on just protecting the the direct environments and entrusting us to patrol the outer areas and we saw that as an entrustment of as a bestowal of trust at the time but now I perhaps he ah, trails off herself mm, I might have put something together in my head uh when you say he ticks, tends to stay to one area, is it one specific area, or does he does he travel around like just the small local area? Is he is he going to the same spot over and over when he wakes up? Um, he mo uh, again like this area is usually is referring to like the domain itself and yeah. Patrolling, he's generally doing the same sort of patrol in a loose, small area around. But it is much smaller than his former roving. My thought is, what if... What if he's meeting with uh, Tyrant? Tyrant is coming to the Domain. Maybe. Uh, Angler actually has a couple ideas on this, but he's not going to speak up while this lady yeah, is this, present, so he's this, being... This was all in if, if you get Hearthnet Semaphore working. Well, alright, I have some, uh, have some questions to throw on the pile. Kind of tangential to the more serious discussion, but possibly helpful, uh, in providing relief from that. For Pose's mm -hmm. part, he also has a curiosity to, to put forth of, uh, yeah, you know, just, just float as a point of conversation that uh, we have seen a place where Bismuth lived some time ago. And uh, timeline-wise, hey, so uh, Bismuth living there, how long ago was that? A couple hundred years. A couple of centuries that ended in... Bad. In Elf Attack. Mm-hmm. And so about, we have a vague sense of how long ago it was that uh, Bismuth showed up in these folks' lives. Mm. Centuries, but on a shorter time scale. <laughs> it is likely that he wandered up into the woods and found these people while wandering kind of walked off from the ruin in a fugue and happened to find 
Thurpos will bring up and discuss and share a bit about this, uh, this former home of Bismuth that the team is, uh, acquainted with over in the lowlands. And he will, uh, trace out the approximate, uh, dimensions of the panel that was missing from the shrine at the ruins. Coolie goes And very... speak of it, and, uh... Yeah, if it's... Oh, well, alright, if he starts to react immediately to having the idea raised, he'll wait and see. When when you mentioned that there was another place that he once kind of was in charge of, there's a bit of uncomfortableness that kind of settles over her, in the sense of like, okay, we were aware of that, but... A very clear sense that he didn't talk about it much. And then you start describing what you found there, and there's just this sinking set of... Uh, uh, and then you describe the dimensions of the panel, and she just goes very quiet and very still. Does he still have it? Yes. Hmm. Repose is satisfied with that for now. Spend a moment being thought about that. He's. He rarely spoke of what his life was like before us, and. Such a story, I believe I understand why. Such a being endures many lives. Family, as far as our histories recite, he has been a looming figure in many of in many of. And other uh, idea that I think this dovetails nicely into, uh, yeah, on, on like condolence and sympathy is of acknowledging that, like, yeah, he's old, he's tired. But uh, th this feels like as much a time as any that we could segue into at least mentioning that we know uh, th the curious little bird from oh, over yes. the hill, and be sure that is on the table. There's a moment of just kind of a jostling out of the sadness into just kind of a reflexive just like <sighs> at the mention of the carrion bird. Ah, yes. The other local chosen of the moon. Yeah, so this one I understand there is... She is pausing and letting you continue. I just understand there is, and you will just kind of convey with, with facial expression the uh, <laughs> nods between them. His visits, as our histories recount, were infrequent and often eventful. He and his spouse would come by to catch up and give assistance, as they saw, and Often it was met with gratitude, but occasionally there were some misunderstandings. Uh. As my grandmothers put it, some private rift opened between the two of them. That much is clear beyond what we were allowed to hear and see. Eventually it festered, and now 
the visits have large stopped beyond what appears to be attempts by the Thousand Eyes to reconcile, to check. It's, it's unclear. When you say misunderstandings, She shifts in size. History says that the Thousand Eyes' spouse, at one point, saw fit to try and teach my ancestors ways of defending themselves, and that our guardian took that as a grave personal insult that he could not do a good enough job of that on his own. And according to the tales, these thousand eyes and the son that followed did not intend that, but our guardian is rather set on an opinion that he gains it. Yeah, that makes sense. Have you since then learned how to protect yourselves in other ways? She kind of shrugs. If the lessons that the son that follows taught us were kept in our history, then they were not labeled as such. Okay, thank you. For what it's worth, the, uh, as you put it, the sun that follows never has an ill intent behind her actions. Well, <laughs> unless you've earned it, but you know. There's a kind of nod at that. But, as you put it, misunderstandings occur. Let's see. The bird has what I propose is going to be entirely go, in tone still at this ahead. point, you know, mournful and so. The bird has also become concerned for the health of the Guardian. Actually looks kind of surprised at that. Yeah, regardless for how your teeth sees the couple, the couple still sees teeth as a friend, or at least a comrade. It is normally in keeping with the ways of my order that affairs of the moon are left the moon's people. It is only kind of a... at the invitation of the crow that I have been asked to do what I am able. That is why I am here. I see. One man who is not my enemy has shown concern for another who is much the same. So I am here to see what can be done. There is a kind of hesitant shifting as several things click into place visibly, and then there is the debate of whether or not to say it, but at this point in the conversation, it is clear that Rahubi is very much kind of going, well, I'm in this horror, before she leans in. 
I believe another point of contention was that both our guardian and the son that follows practice the way of sorcery. And I am unsure of what happened between the two of them, but something something regarding their path, something regarding perhaps a collaboration, a contest, a competition. Our histories are unclear. They only they only mention that while the son that follows was a practiced sorcerer, she deliberately did not invoke that within a boundary of our village. I believe that there may be a history that never reached our there. Hmm. Also, there is, at the comment of that, sort of a bit of, like... I don't know whether to say, like, a chuckle or just a surprise of... Bear's a wizard? <laughs> Bear's a wizard? We asked about banishing demons. Angler actually, with the mention of Sybil, you know, doing Sybil things, just kind of rolls his eyes. Of, of course she didn't tell us something that would have been really important to know. Thanks, Sybil. Now, to be fair, uh, I will say... I might be wrong, and if it, I am wrong, then I was operating on the wrong assumptions, and I should have said this earlier. Bismuth being a sorcerer was not meant to be a secret. He was the one who helped with um, Koi to bind the wild bubble. I believe the that whole, had, had come yeah, up before. The whole reason that he it's... hadn't done anything about the second circle demon in the swamp is, okay, yeah, I can sit here and try to banish a demon, and then it eats my face while I do it yes. on my own. This had already come up. Yeah. In like the immediate post uh tree times. Yeah, this was like months ago, so I figured it was worth the refresh because I <laughs> heard and saw some confusion. But we tried to float the idea of hey, if we get some kind of crew together and create an opportunity, would you uh Yeah. And he said, Yeah, I mean if you get some but if you get a critical mass between the demon and me, then I will give it a shot. Oh, my thing about Sybil not saying thing is that she started some shit with Bismuth. That would not the that Bismuth is a sorcerer. Or didn't start shit with him, but had it sounds more like maybe had a competition that she went a bit Sybil on of Ah, this is a perfectly good plan to do this. What do you mean, limiters? What do you mean don't go too far? Uh oh. And pissed off bismuth need to know information about wizard bullshit yes it is either they had an old me obsidian specifically i would say obsidian and repose would probably well everybody honestly if you're reflecting on it please roll me your maximum willpower okay ah oh, man perhaps me as a <sighs> sorcerer in my own right might shed some light yeah Ooh. actually yeah Seven. Uh, four. Uh, you get two dice, Milan. Okay. Well. Actually, let me see if there is a specialty I can put towards this. Five successes. Five as well. Okay, let me think about how to phrase this for a sec. There's not a specialty I can put towards this. Way to use those uh, stunt dice. <laughs> Actually, you can't use, like, relationships to get bonuses, can you? If you have an intimacy, you can. Not intimacy, but I do have Sun as a 5 dot so just relationship with i'll give you a two di extra dice for that 
<laughs> like, like hey, that, I, at this is, point, I, right yeah, at this point, I've been communicating with the two of them enough that I would have a thought yeah. into the way that they yeah, do okay. things. So that would give you two extra, no, three extra dice right now, actually. All right, so that's uh, that is six successes on my part. So, Obsidian and Repose both remember it about the same time. Long ago, back in the Wild Dome conversation, pre-Wild Dome, when talking to him about the demon, there was a very brief aside he had talking about the binding of the Second Circle Demon. There was a third sorcerer there, and he said that he had a grudge against them because he felt that they could have done more to help. Oh. Yes. And at the time, we... You didn't know. No, that she had sorcery. Right. Yes. Right. Well. <sighs> so it wasn't that Sybil went too far. It was that she held back. Hey, Bismuth, she held did you just back. not tell your village about how big of a thing just happened over the hill that you had to go fix? Bismuth, do you just not tell your village about your adventures when you get back from them? Do you just kind it of roll over that he does into not. a heap and grumble? It, it appears sure doesn't that... seem like they know... It, well, if they know about the demon, then they're not talking about it to you, primarily. Actually, hmm. Also, I will bring up the point of there is the... You know, I think at some point... Uh, hey, okay, yeah, let's just say at some point during the explanation of things, we might have, like, unfurled our map to be like, yeah, this is where this happened, yeah, we, we did something over here. Uh, you know, I, I, I casually at one point, Obsidian would say, oh, we're also trying to get a bit more information on this because obviously, you know, our map kind of just says we shouldn't approach it. You know, curiosity would get the better of us, but we're just, you know, we're a bit where we don't want to run into it. You have any idea about what this is and we'll just point at don't. Okay. Also, I will say, roll me. Um, let's call it wit socialize if you, while you're thinking about it. Okay. Give me a hot second. Oh, there we go. That's a five. Hey, this is an oral history culture. It is entirely possible that things that you don't want the later generations to know just stop getting talked about. Hmm. He may or may not have told the local people what he did. They may or may not have told their kids. That is, like, entirely down to both him and the local family units in charge of their own individual stories and histories. But uh, when you point out the swamp, there is a kind of furrowed expression. I believe... I believe the Guardian mentioned that there was an unclean font of water below that had dangers within it, but... We don't exactly venture out that far. Do all the successes. Is he telling me the truth? She seems to be telling the truth. Asterisk. In the sense of... That is basically what she knows. But also you get the feeling that she might have asked a question or two about it to her elders or to Bismuth. And then just kind of had an evasion of just like... That's what you need to know. It doesn't really matter. It's down mm -hmm. there. 
Uh, apologies, as an aside to something you mentioned earlier. You said that the enemies of creation hadn't threatened you around here. What about others? I know that far in the past there has been conflict between you and the humans of the East. Ah, uh, yes. Former governments of the God's Breath River were less than charitable to our existence on principles of viewing us as an extension of the wild in the eyes and the ears of the Raksha. Cat hiss and spit at using that word. And an extension of that Nodding, he... pointing. Made our displeasure with that unclear. Every time they decided to leave their curated little borders and try to make that known, we would send messages back. And this went back and forth for some time until... Apparently, whatever human was in charge of the humans that live in that river, and our guardian came to an accord, and an understanding was reached of mutual... There's a searching for the word. Mutual neighborship. Have any other human governments been causing you any gr grief recently? Kind of a bewildered shake of the head. Kind of also gestures out the window to the wall of trees. I believe the closest thing you would call a government is run by the sorceress by the river. and She mostly sticks to herself. If she has a message to speak with the Guardian, she will either come herself or send one of her messenger birds. She has... Curious interests, but none of them go against our Guardian's will. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, there's the occasional scattered villages of humans in the woods, but we give them their birth and they give us their uh, theirs. I'm glad to hear there's no worrying sign of hostility directed at your people. Our guardian was... Remarkably good at establishing the consequences of disturbing our tranquility. Uh, character uh what else are we looking to get out of this scene party wise well the, the immediate thing we're looking at to get out of the scene is like some kind of local side quest yeah, yeah. is there any problems yeah. going on do they have any is yeah. there anything that they think is a problem but not enough to awaken the bear yeah the... uh if you dig into that there would be a reinforcement of what uh the guard the um my notes back up yet, and I don't have the name in front of me. Uh, the guide you had here said, uh, there is some tension between the pangolin folk and the bee eaters, between shared resources and food. Uh, the pangolin folk have a near-exclusive diet of the ants and the termites, and the bee eaters are largely omnivorous in terms of insects and some other stuff, and will occasionally just come by and take uh significant chunks out of the ant and termite stock because they just feel like having that snack and they're like hey we we guard the deity and we take care of things we might as well do that and there's just this it's not like a flashpoint tension thing yet but it is just one of those arguments that you just don't want to get started because both sides are going to holler at each other over it Is this something that Bear would appreciate us settling, or would this be outsiders involved in things they shouldn't bother with? 
That's to the group. I think we should squarely stick to dealing with problems that they can't handle on their own. After what we have been told of Bear does not appreciate people stepping in where they are not needed, we should stick to if we are needed or not. That's my opinion. Out of character, there is actually not much threatening this village, is the awkward thing, is that he did go to, did do a very good setup of keeping this place in order before going to nap. So the question is, do you wake him up or do you try to get information while keeping him asleep? Those other side question to have worked in here that probably would have managed to come up in this meeting. So is there any formal leadership in this town or is it mostly just distributed over families and it's, vague it's cultural ad, consensus? It is ad hocracy, cultural consensus, family lineage sort of stuff. Like most stuff is handled within extended family line. And then if it goes any further than that, or if it, crashes into each other, then Bear is brought in to adjudicate if it is a big enough deal, and the consensus cannot be met. It is mostly just kind of a commune. It just, they don't really... It is small enough and they have large Bear and are mutualist enough in their needs in terms of what they can provide for each other and what they need for each other that there isn't all that much conflict beyond small-scale stuff, unless external factors come into play. Again, like, the damnable thing of it is that Bismuth did a pretty good job with this place. There's not major, huge side quests and dangers to go take out. He, he did that already. The, the major... The major problem, as it were, is kind of the, the local pall over what's getting into, you know... What's getting into our boy? Also, no, Ruby has not been name dropped at all because they are unaware of Ruby. Yeah, that would be the nuclear bomb option that none of the players are taking. Dang, we we gotta do a festival. We gotta we gotta plan a festival. Ah, uh, here's yeah. a community where things are very peaceful and not endangered. Because the the protector has done a good job, Th that means protector gets a treat. That's what festivals are for. Got to have everybody get together and do a big. We appreciate the bear friend. Oh God. Okay. Uh, some of them may have stepped away, but I love this idea already. If, if there's no if there's no bad things to you know rip and tear apart, this is an area free of doom. That means it is an area for parties. I like, I, I, I do genuinely out of character enjoy the players kind of wandering around. For, what do we do if there's not something to punch for like a good 15 minutes? Of like, where, where's the side? What do we, what do we do? Where's the plot hook? Wait, what do you mean he did a good job here? But I didn't want to have so, you uh, like on the like, hook for that long. Repose wise, he would, uh, all right, so the suggestion I would put forth is that since there is no authority here that we would be, like, formally meeting with, the appropriate substitution is to instead just kind of spend a little while here making the rounds and meeting with anyone who is interested in hearing from us. Mm -hmm. With, like, you know, some amount of that would just happen, you know, montage-wise. Right, of course. Off camera. We're having this meeting with a specific character that is a scene that we're doing to exchange these points. Mm -hmm. But before deciding anything about how we would like to uh, deal or not deal around the town, just go meet everyone else. Go hear local stories, exchange ideas. Mm -hmm. For Pose's part, he is thinking about wanting to make some kind of gift for each of the folks. Mm-hmm. Then naturally leading to escalating the thought of, so what's a gift for a bear? <laughs> what about a bear present? You give. Or a bear. As everything. 
Give him honey. He's got that. So are we throwing a party or? Yeah. I mean, the plan I'm plan voting is... here is if our if our concern is that that you know Bear is in a bad general state of being right now, and this community is in a bad state of being of concern for Bear, and there's no dangers for us to go fight here. The, we got to do a festival. All right. Well, I'm gonna make a dis I'm gonna make a disguise roll. Okay. Where are we going with this? Um, I'm going to dress up as the bear census office officer. I guess I'm gonna go around collecting opinions on what we should name the bear festival from the from the populace that we are organizing this. And what exactly would this outfit be? Um, going around with the box, getting, you know, raising awareness for Bear Festival. But also, you know, like, what should we call this new thing we're making? Would that really be a disguise roll? Well, the disguise roll is to make a nice, uh, make a yeah, nice suit. Uh, yeah, build okay. a nice costume to use as a tool to help with this. I okay, mean, yeah, making okay. a costume uh, to look like oh. an officiator of Bear Fest, whatever that may be at the end. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, one dice stunt on your disguise roll, then, then I will go into the second roll. What even is a disguise roll? It's been a million years since I've done this. Uh, I believe it's dex larceny, or it is manipulation larceny. One of the two. I'm gonna go with dex larceny because that's nine. I mean, if we're not gonna get into combat, I have to use something. It's a pretty good suit. Yeah, no, it's a pretty uh, on short notice. It's a fantastic way of looking more official and just nice, just kind of verdant. You know, appearance, some bear iconography across it. Uh, just a very nice, professional-looking, you know, drop it's box your, for suggestions. It's your broken ass outfit, but you have bear ears on. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I just removed all sinus iconography and replaced it with, like, smiley faces and bears. various prominent calligraphy of bear. Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess while this conversation is happening, I'll walk back in from off screen wearing this. Just looking at Repose like, right? We good? On brand? So yeah, let's let's float this idea of a party, a festival to these people saying, That's a hey, I feel like we we start to do an amount of time of just be here for yeah. a full day mingling about yeah, yeah. and just each respectively start to build up the the general insinuation of yeah allow the gossip to propagate around that yeah we we've heard the bear is sick and we're worried about the bear as well which we've means bear, obsidian gets we like plus bear. one yeah and you have you used friend to all nations attitude or. I mean, I haven't because we haven't been here long, but if we are staying here for a day now... Oh, yeah, yeah, now you yes. do. Ooh, get acclimatized. I just remembered, Milan has friends to all nations. Yeah. yeah. Friends. Milan is going to talk to the birds about their trails. What about the roads? Friend of all nations is such a basically good charm of... It's if a, you such are, a good charm. If you are in a place for long enough, you just have plus one to social checks. Everybody shut the fuck up. Morgan just called it Ursa Day. Hmm. That's strong. It's a good day. That's, God damn it, I can't say no. <laughs> okay, Darren, tell me about these trails. I want to know about the roads for the birds. Uh... <laughs> You know, I really should think more actively about the infrastructure and roads of places you go when that's your gimmick, but... I, it... We often go to places and they're... It's fine. So, this is actually somewhere you would actually have quite a bit of ability to, like, take poles and, um... Uh... So basically... In Village, there's not really a need for anything but desire paths. It's, again, most of the buildings are either in a rock or underground, and they have made paths themselves. Um, outside of the Village, there's not 
much in terms of trails beyond hunting trails and general movement of prey animal stuff. Like, just general, this has just been beaten down by the migration of animals or the movement of the hunters. Like, because the village doesn't really have paths of trade that go other places. And they they try to limit the degree of wood they collect. So there's not a lot of frivolous yeah. carpentry that happens here. There's so, not a lot in the way of like carts or sleds and yeah. they don't they don't have like a, a draft animal for hauling stuff yeah. around. So most of the reasons you would want a paved road are absent. So yeah. what Milan is looking at is not, okay, how do I make their roads better? Is okay, what are they doing? What what can I learn from them? Roll me. How, uh, how can I wits. how can I integrate my roads into the environment like they have? What's in uh wits bureaucracy two dice dot? Uh you cut out on the ability. Wits bureaucracy two dice dot. Thank you. Wanna know about the roads? So this is probably the first time Milan has seen a completely unaltered by any other need or desire or logistical cause set of desire paths. Like every other place you have been has been at least some form of modernized, well, air quotes, modernized, or organized. urbanized. Yeah, urbanized. With some sort of plan, some sort of geomancy, some sort of something. And sitting here and looking at just the the trails of where people go and how people are going and the just kind of laid in things, you realize that a lot of that is not arbitrary. There are principles behind it, especially when they are more efficient, but one of the most efficient ways of getting to point A to point B is just look at how people gravitate towards doing it over a long period of time because they're probably going to find the most efficient way of doing it. Sometimes the best way of making a road is to just let let people show you. Let people just intuitively navigate through an environment enough to have the marker show of where a path should be and then you make the path easier to traverse. Now, if you were integrating things like sleds or draft animals or anything else, then yeah, you would have differentiated ways of like more straight paths, more direct manipulation of the environment to aid logistics and things like that. But what you're really just really super noticing here is frankly how much the realm overthinks roads to a degree. And to an extent, they have to, with the difference of traffic and the difference of... There's... You have to make the roads to serve the purpose of the local area. Yes. These, there these is... people don't need carts, paved yeah. roads and stuff. They need just a path to get from here to the big Mount Termites. Yeah. You do road infrastructure and because you have been doing it on the aisle for your whole life and then a little bit out on the threshold you had a very locked in idea of okay this is always the right road design for every situation that this would be involved in and now you're sitting here just going you know what the smarter thing would just be sit down and what do you need like not what from my book do you need no what do you specifically need What is the use case of this area and whatever else around it is connected to? And in the realm, there is a lot of, you know, putting it in the square hole kind of situation of, like, you've got the bureaucratically approved way of doing things, and if it doesn't work, well, you just drill through that mountain. You know, we don't have to force it into a geomantic shape. We can just let it follow the the natural geoman. Yeah, yeah you're in a domain. You could just find what naturally works and build to accommodate it rather than grab the local geomancy by the throat and force it into the shape you want. As long as we aren't going over a mountain, we don't need to use the dynamite. Yeah. 
I mean, if you would like some advice about going over a mountain. <laughs> and, and dynamite be involved? Kind of segues nicely into it. So, uh, Repose's activity for engaging in miscellaneous gossip would be he will, like, go to the places where people are doing day-to-day -day work and just kind of curiously surveil them and occasionally dare to just kind of zoop in and ask a question about what they're doing and how they're doing it and be, like, gradually thinking about and recreating the sorts of tools that they use or speculating on tools they don't have that could be useful. Okay, uh, Wits Craft with a one die stunt. And yeah, we're just gonna lean into that with the old excellence. But Repose is already as a as a maker and a philosopher and servant of the wilderness as a as an embodied and divine concept. He is all about the thing that, it, that, you know, the least viable thing that serves a purpose, and that all things serve purposes. Yes. That the way that you live and the means that you use to live are a product of your environment. That everything yes. is shaped by the context of the other things that are integrated with it. So he's just as, very, very as Mo, in there. As Milan is learning that lesson off in the corner, Repose is already just in there up to the hips. This is just how he live. He's been anticipating this for a while. Of, oh, hey, what's love like, life like for people who just have knife hands and don't need to carry yeah. knives because so the hands is knives? First of all, the thing you realize is that basically there is no such thing as a digging tool here because the pangolin's hands are digging tools and also chiseling tools and also demolition. Like basically any form of non-extremely specific and fine and, you know, fine detailed demolition or engraving work, you don't need it because you have people with shovel hands and chisel hands. hands. Um, that's uh, like a huge major factor. Like, yeah, Repose would probably just look at them and just be nodding approvingly, just like, yeah, hands as tools. Same. Yeah, same hands. The one downside is that their claws make manual dexterity quite difficult they don't really have hands that are well suited to delicately manipulating things or holding things that are fragile or just general you know fine finger detail work i would not but, trust them with holding a baby pretty much now the upside on that is that they have birds to do that, because birds have more or less anatomically identical to human hands. Uh, birds, uh, as you are observing them, mostly have a set of improvised tools for the apiary and the horticulture. Um, they're... They do their work fine, and they do... Um, they they kind of convergently have evolved on there are only so many ways you can till a ground there are only so many ways you can actually i say that and i remember there are a lot of ways you can tell the earth uh, I, I imagine there's not much in the way of metals in use here no there is almost no metal here it yeah is... mostly sharp rock sharp wood and then yeah, just sharp stone and sharp wood and then you know the fact that they have nail and chitin and other hardened yeah body parts their body parts with. are probably the most multi claws tool. reduce the need for a knife claws talons beak yeah the the leopard claws uh fangs like uh, there is enough sharp body parts that will resist casual damage that there is very little need for anything other than a high quality metal object for tools and in those cases they just have gotten around needing to use them like the 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 major stuff that they would probably need any sort of metal for is stuff they could just call bismuth in to turn into a giant animal and like knock a tree over 
or something like that. Yeah, the presence of of bear wizard also obviates a lot of tech problems. So there is a lot of just, yeah, they don't have X, Y, Z set of tools or material sciences or whatever, but they don't need them and they probably will never need them unless their situation uh, uh, da, 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 da. This, So this probably puts Repose into more of a tack of things he would want to give as a gift not necessarily being yeah, so... practical, but instead thinking about curiosities and novelties. This so would dovetail them, excellently in my idea. Yeah, so because you got ten fucking successes, I will give curiosities and novelties that they probably don't have out here is artisan work in general. There is there is a degree of that. Uh, like, you know, the leopards could probably use sharpened claws to do some like gentle wood engraving and carving and things like that, but metals and curiosities made of metal would be very rare. Um, things of extreme use would probably be along the lines of spices or materials to help with the cultivation of the insects and the flowers that they don't normally have access to, or other things that just would be not something you see in a settled forest village of hunting and gathering folk. All right, anyway, Yang has an idea. And Yang, you had your idea? Oh, um, so I'm just going to go roaming through the streets using my my animal tongue, just shouting cultural exchange. <laughs> <laughs> Yang just making various social beast noises. He's just hooting, squawking. And anyone who wanders up, I will ask their name, what their business is, you know, what their deal is, the vibe. Ask Bring them if they want any, you know. Pretty much, yeah. Culture, culture. Just miscellaneous small talk, it's answer questions like, yet. "Hey, how do you how do you cook?" Uh, what do you, when, cook? you know, when you when you ask that, um, there is an immediate just sense of, "Oh, you activated some of their favorite things." It's just you are immediately like taken to the side and shown excitedly. Well, here's like, you know, our crock where we help with the pickling to preserve the insects over a long period of time, since we have to harvest a lot of them at once and eat a lot of them at once for our body weight. So, like, there is an entire just vat of brines and salts full of termites and ants. Um, the smell to you is not appetizing, but it's probably something you can get used to. Um, I mean, yeah, it's probably just culture shock, honestly. Yeah. Um... Something that is close, like, actually kind of looks appetizing is one of the storage areas where they keep the prepared bees. As I mentioned, uh, they do their bee preparation for eating by, instead of smoking them to calm them down, like smoking as in just cook them. You cork up all the exits and entrances and you uh, asphyxiate them and then you turn it up to cook them and then now they are crunchy snacks and... There is some preparation of pulling out the venomous stinger and not eating that while you eat them, but that is something suited to bird beak and other ways of handling it. Um, you're actually offered a handful of the de-stung ones if you wanted to give it a shot. I fucking did. I fucking chop on those. It's quite good. It's like if there is something that Yang has eaten that I could relate it to. It's like, like a I very... Probably eaten just, he's probably eating just raw worms and shit. Yeah, yeah, you've actually probably eaten enough raw insects. For this, it's like the same kind of savory, crunchy, vaguely seafood-adjacent flavors, but actually just with, like, nice wood smoke flavors and some hints of spices. Like, it's like a really done, well, well-cooked smoked shrimp, except millions of them and crunchy and small. It's really good, actually. Ooh, that's a 10. Uh, but most of their culinary stuff is based on mass harvesting and preservation of the insects, because if you were just a grazer and you had a roughly human metabolism, that would take you fucking you all day. You would not do anything but eat all day. 
you need to have oh, more calories. <laughs> True. Um, but yeah. So immediately, one thing that comes to Yang's mind is festival. Big important part of festival is going to be food. It is going to be foods they like and. Possibly introductions to either new cooking methods or ingredients that you have brought in for special occasions, because like Yang has a cabinet full of, you know. Yeah, I'm basically just showing them like what's happening here is it's a lore talk where I'm just like basically acclimatizing them to the idea of Naked Eight Man. Two, hey, what a festival! We do festival. We're festival crew. You want to do a festival? And three, like check out all this weird shit I have. Any opinions? So if I did this, would it mean anything to you? Okay, so, um, a lot of the alchemical medicine stuff gets their attention in terms of like they have their herbal remedies and they have their own medicinal treatments that they use but it's always interesting to compare and contrast some stuff they kind of look at and maybe take a sample or two it's when you bust out the herbs and spices and the other culinary ingredients that are like yeah you can use this for medicine or you can just eat it if you have enough of it that is when they really are just kind of zeroing in like Ooh, gotta smell that. Ooh, gotta taste that. Oh, gotta look at that. Gotta appreciate that. Because when you live in the middle of the woods and you have none trade and you've been here for centuries, you've probably got a pretty set cuisine that doesn't change much. And any introduction of something new is going to be a just kind of epical event. Yeah. Anything that catches their interest that they could also manufacture here, I will be like, yeah. And, you know, here's some seeds or whatever. You would probably have a small selection of... Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, is that sea salt? Yeah, I kind of reacts. It's like, what salt comes in the You've been like to that? the what sea? The... What the fuck is that? Big salt wet? What rocks. the fuck? Why is it flakes? Why has it got flakes? Why is it crystals? What? It does that? <laughs> yeah, just that, that kind of reaction. And you could probably hand over, like, some... Of your more sturdy herb or spice seeds that you are a wood aspect exalt that knows survival and medicine. You would know the ones that would hand over that no one would grow well in this climate and two would not become an invasive in species the moment you turn your back. Yeah, the the very careful thing of well, let's introduce something new here, but not something dangerous or something that is like you know just be like, hey, check it out. Here's these these fun little Sweet like, it takes you a while to sort through your stuff, but you eventually select a small selection. Like, okay, this is probably going to fit in with what they have and not fuck it up too bad. It'll be an adjustment period, not an invasion. And then, of course, like, you know, you still have the processed stuff that you would not want to grow here or plant here, but you can use for a festival. This leafy green for salad it's called kudzu, and then Yang is immediately murdered by the bear waking up. But yeah, no, Yang is very successful in wandering around and getting that kind of angle going. Uh, it's as aimless without... as it can possibly be. Uh, the, uh, but yeah, it's just the general, like, I, Yang doesn't even really need a roll on that one, because just the angle you picked was perfect for that. You just, you get what you want out of that. Of just seeding the idea of a festival and getting people used to your presence and just kind of giving around the curios and the interests and the stuff that Repose was kind of settling on as an idea. Uh, in the meantime, Obsidian and Angarder and Old Man, I suppose. What would you be up to? It's your local lake, pond, stream. So there is a set of ponds in the low-lying areas. Um, they're kind of standing water, but the wood domain means that... I mean, there's, there's, there's stuff growing in it, but it's probably not going to kill you. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh, there's... Uh -huh. There is also a well and a selection of, um, actually no, there wouldn't be a well at all because this is a rainforest. There's just well, there's just rain barrels all over the place.
trees, under the trees. So yeah, most of the water would be in collection contraptions or in low-lying areas. Okay. What are you looking for? He's looking for some water because he's just going to fish. Like, literally walk, just ha walk into the water, be there for like 20 minutes and come out with a giant sack of fish. Oh, yeah. If you walk out a mile or two, you could probably find a considerable size lake with a stock of fish. Yeah, yeah. He's probably just going to do that. Just, uh, you, they need different... F I'll be right back. And the, the, the cats will like this. Give cat fish. They love it. And just, he's muttering the entire way over to the lake, just walks in all the way down to the bottom, comes out on the other side with a sack of fish, just looks at it, and just <laughs> walks right back on the under, uh, the bottom of the lake, and it has two sacks, and uh, that's good enough. He had to dump, dump out his bag of rocks to do it, but he's got enough fish. Somehow has a uh, salmon in between his teeth. I mean, that's just so, delicious. On the delivery of the fish, they are wildly grateful. They do occasionally fish, but they try not to stress the stocks of ponds nearby as they are all very localized and don't really have inflow. Also, they don't really use fishing rods because the only ones who really fish and eat meat would be the leopards who can just sit at the side and, like, pounce and grab with claws. But you going in deeper and getting the bigger fish would be like, oh, wow, we almost never get these. Holy crap. Uh, Obsidian, what would you be up to? Obsidian starts wandering around mm -hmm. until he catches a uh, a glimpse of a couple of the workers maybe on their break or something. Playing a board game. Yeah. I don't know what the board game is, but that's what I want to happen. It's Mishon. Bismuth would have imported Mishon. Hmm. <laughs> oh, hello. Old Dang, man. it looks like I'm already there. I was gonna say, old man, your Mishong census is tingling. Old man has found a region where he is not yet banned from Mishong. Yes. I haven't been banned from this rule set yet. Hell yeah. Also, we don't, I'm assuming they don't really use money here. So like he gets to no, play like purely, regular. Like this is purely no stakes. They literally have sticks for the Ricci sticks. Okay. Now it's time to actually introduce stakes then. Oh no. Oh, oh, I see I old man is importing his local rule set. No, I'm not. I'm going to be playing to their rule set. It's just that I have to then also maybe r wager some form of existential, you know, value that I have somehow. How? <sighs> what would they bet? I don't know. It's not there. They don't have to do it. I just need to introduce the concept. Old man isn't asking anyone else to bet. He just wants them to know that he oh. will put something of his own at risk. Don't yes. summon a demon in these perfectly nice animal... I'm going to introduce gambling to them, yes. That's the idea here. They probably understand gambling just fine. I mean, I, I want to introduce them to the concept of gambling with Mahjong. And possibly for gambling for things that you really shouldn't ever gamble for. Hey, uh, Obsidian, you're walking up as probably he's starting to give the explanation. What would you do? Uh, Maj uh, Old Man will gamble the ability to, like, hit some what of the What do I have to roll to just, like, here? Shepherd's Crook Old Man away? <laughs> Gonna have to try really fucking hard. That would be an opposed strength roll grappling contest. Oh, you hmm. want to grapple? Hmm. Remember, this is one of the things Old Man is surprisingly and horrifyingly good at. What is grapple is check? Grappling is a gambit. It is, um, I believe it's a, a strength brawl gambit. Is what outside, of, outside of combat, I would just make it an opposed strength brawl roll. 
Well, okay. That means, is here's the thing. I know for a fact, while Obsidian has the strength, he doesn't have the brawl. And while Old Man does right. not have the brawl, he uh, doesn't have the strength, he does have the brawl. All right, do you have your roll ready? A worthy foe. All right, uh, I am the opposition. Let me go ahead and add up my very many um, additional bonuses. Yeah, all of your fucking wild mutation bonuses. Okay, give me a second. Uh, now, are these... Are these bonuses to opposing being grabbed yes actually they're specifically that piss yes <laughs> the the they do differentiate uh i'm also allowed to flurry while grappling that's pretty neat on top of that i also don't lose uh control if someone hits me while i'm grappling it's really hard to get me off and also to remove me from my from a grapple I wasn't. I wasn't gonna say anything. Yeah, I had to though. <laughs> well, uh, I think in this case it's just mainly that uh, I reduce the difficulty of the. Hold on. Gonna, okay, grapple, hypermobility, uh, establish or resist control. Of, oh, it actually does both. Neat. Add an, an additional die there. Doesn't lose control. Tangling limbs, well, grappling flow. Oh, actually, it's just one additional die. Okay, fine. Did I give myself a, a specialty for this? Because I may as well you have. Did. I did, yes. All right. Five plus one plus one plus one. So eight. Okay. I have I have Are a backup ready? for this that that may be funny if this fails. Okay, I'm ready. They also both tried to stunt on this. Oh, easy every single time because like the moment <laughs> that uh, Obsidian's go to try and get him, it, like touch him to uh, remove him from his location, uh, old man's limbs w without like moving from his seat, his limbs are going to extend and just like and wrap around uh, Obsidian's as best they can. Obsidian's going to attempt to kick the Geta out from under him. Oh! Okay, both of you have a one die stun of just being weird about it and also being going max rude about it. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Three, two, one. Let's jam. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, not, not a, a botch not and a then just a minimum success. Wild. <laughs> Oh, we really actually this fucked is the this up. This is really good guys. Juice. This is extremely cloud juice, is what this is. You know what? I can play a willpower and make that die. I mean, I can as well. But so did old man. Damn it. In fact, mine is free. Yep, yeah, old man gets the one willpower a, a day. Uh, well, I suppose if you are going to go in willpower, then there's no reason to spend the willpower. Well, will you spend it or not? It's up to you. Do you want to be the one to enter my magical realm? <laughs> Actually, yes, I will spend the willpower because again, I'm not going to. This is funnier if it's if it's OK. <laughs> <laughs> you just get entangled. So narrative voice from the storyteller here. What happens is old man has sat down at this Mahjong table as one of the four pangolin folk playing Mahjong. Uh, decides that she's had enough for the day and kind of sets off. And then you come up and sit down and have a round with them. And they... You are... As far as humans go, humans is already weird enough. You're weird like, I don't know, maybe, maybe some of them are just like this. Until you start talking about the idea of wagering things. And they're familiar with the idea of like, oh yeah, well I can, you know... I can wager that I do the cooking today or something. Like, they, they gamble, but it's like there's not much of it. But then you start... I want to teach them. You start trying to introduce the idea of gambling in abstracts and gambling. And then all of a sudden, this 7 foot 20 motherfucker walks up behind you and they all pop into a ball at once in panic as they just has the hand clap on your shoulder. And then the arm wraps around his arm. And then the kick goes out to the Geta, 
And all of a sudden, several things happen at once. One, old man starts falling backwards. Two, Obsidian remembers that old man in copper form is like 2,000 pounds. He's very heavy. Okay, you, I, you can probably lift him, but he's very heavy. I, I do want it to be known that in universe, though he would do this rude move and would be trying to interrupt old man as much as possible, he would never let old man touch the ground. Right. Well, basically, the the implication right. is that basically old man is falling backwards, and instead of you two getting into a grapple, you just kind of collapse in on each other with old man landing on top of Obsidian. Again, will be rude to him, respects his opinions. Bumping the table, knocking down old man's tiles, and it's, what do you know, Chi toy. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, what the- Obsidian! I'm I'm right about to introduce them to the actual fun of Mahjong! Mm -mm -mm. No, you're not. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. I will teach them. I will teach. If I lose, I will teach them further. It's how it works. I mean, why are you playing Mahjong without gambling? Why would anyone do that? What's the point? Uh, it's at this point that uh, here's my second ploy to make this go even better. Okay. I am going to do a uh, a charisma presence roll. Uh, to be louder than old man and to be like, okay, hey, you want to actually know something really interesting? There's actually a, a weird screwed up way that you can play Mahjong that's actually kind of dope. It's sort of a 1v1. I'm going to teach them Minefield Mahjong. <laughs> I <don't laughs> I'm probably going to be able to have like, I guess yeah. if it's going to be a, a, One a charisma presence loudness. combination competition sure uh okay uh, for people in the chat minefield mahjong is from kaiji it is a weird like turnways version of mahjong where you pull what is it doc like 20 tiles 17, 17 tiles. Se tiles. yeah no it's um okay it's two entire it's an entire uh wall of tiles you know it's the four uh walls and you you grab one of those which i believe it, it's more than 17 i'm pretty sure because you have to have a, a full hand anyway, once you're you, done. I think you it's 34. a lot of tiles and just... Oh, yeah. it's 34 build. and you go down to 17, I think. You go down you, you go, to a completed hand. Yeah. So what, 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 the point, what the point of it is, is you pull an entire wall of tiles. You create a hand that's in Tenpai. At so least one, a Mongon as well. Yeah, it has to be at least the, a Mongon. Yeah, at least a Mongon has to be one away from winning. And then you and your opponent have to discard the rest of your hand without dealing into the other person's hand. Yes. With no information. Mm hmm Uh, hence Minefield Mahjong. Anywho, uh, so that's Charisma Presence. With a one dice stunt on you. Yeah. Versus my own Charisma Presence of just trying to speak over him, but I am old and also... Please. Uh, much smaller. Let me refresh myself on the, on the Presence Mastery. Uh, I'm gonna go and just throw throw my rolls here. Uh, what the hell? Just three? What? You missed the uh, missed the seven. 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 Oh right, right, right. My bad. Greater than S. Yes, greater than S. All right, so okay. that's six sixes. There is no chance that old man you, would ever spe be able to speak over uh, Obsidian. Yeah, you are attempting. What, Obsidian, what are you doing? And then just, hey, guys, <laughs> have you heard about the good news? <laughs> Obsidian is speaking at about 80 or 90 decibels. <laughs> and like this, this skirt, the, this frightens the pangolin folk deeper and like in, more constricted into their like, you know, panic ball until they realize that Hang on. Friendly shouting? Loud, 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 really loud, but friendly noises? But they slowly just kind of uncurl as they realize that this is just someone who is very, very loud. And start getting introduced to this strange new variant. This old man just picks himself up on Geta and is trying to talk over and realizes that you 
would have to now be very quickly realize that this is a completely uh on like <laughs> you are doomed also hold on my, a second i have an idea also my further oh, no. my further role but uh would never succeed at this role because my roles for introducing a fact are completely terrible uh i would introduce the fact that this is one of the versions of mahjong that old man is banned from it is for sure. One v one me in Mahjong, definitely something he's banned from. Yeah, but that would be one of the time, first you're banned from. <laughs> honestly, yes. Uh, but on the other hand, old man eventually comes up, uh, realizes, mm, wait a second, I'm being out yelled over. I can't, uh, I can't out yell this, but I can probably spook him from uh, continuing on because I can just make an extremely louder sound. Oh no. Hey, you remember that's a weapon, right? Uh, yeah, I'll just tight and target it, like, away. It's fine. Like, it can be heard from distance, uh, extreme distances Why away. Why are we already repeating the ballista incident? Because I want, to, <laughs> I want to gamble, and I'm being prevented from doing so. <laughs> um... Hmm, how much distance is preventing I'm gonna say that the heart is hearing from, obsidian uh, hollering by now. Just okay, walk give me... by it, see what's happening, go right back to a lake to get more fish. Just, nope, don't care. Shuffle on into position, possibly gently dragging behind him. We, we could suppose that perhaps at least one pangolin folk has become, like, co-fascinated with stuff that Repose has to say about rocks and digging. So, uh, Old Man is doing this directly behind me, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, in order to give myself a bit of a... Oh my, because strength would not make sense at all. Hey, can I make a dex melee to parry this? What, parry the noise blast? Yeah, because he has to slam his hands together, so I am attempting to put my sword in between his hands. Well. <laughs> oh, I like that, actually. That's really yes, good. Yes, yes, yes! Yes. All right. Well, done. Uh, okay. I'm going to then roll the attack. Ad no, no. Hold on. What, what is this supposed to you have to do? Because it's like an AOE. It's an artillery piece. All right. Let's just do the regular uh, gather sorcerer's motes then that it's posed by. Well, <clears throat> gather remotes would probably not. You're just building up to the target number. But I, there's no real attack afterwards, I don't. Is there? Uh, specifically, it's it's just initiative. Actually, now I think about it. Yeah, you would have to be in combat speed, and that would be some setup. Maybe some sort of occult roll because you're casting a spell. Yeah, probably just dex occult. I feel like yeah, you you make the attempt to charge up the spell, and obsidian is getting in your way. Yeah, for the for what it's worth, same result because you know dex occult yeah. into cult, it'd all be the same. It's ten mm -hmm. dice. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. All right. Oh fuck. Well then. <laughs> yeah, I so I, I see you put the uh, the sword out in the center there, but guess what? You can go ahead and uh, slightly palm like slightly swell out your palms, and so you just get the like the bottom of the palms and the tip fingertips clanging together and makes a different but similar sound so there is actually just a sword then poking at old man's face right between his fingers and like that's normal though that's not a concern i just want to let you all know i after hearing that i tried to do that myself <laughs> clang and uh yeah it, there is a a it is another gong sound like up in the sky. It's not going to be hitting anyone, thankfully. Uh, but it is extremely loud. Louder than Obsidian. There is a sudden commotion of panic all of a sudden as there is just like, what the fuck was that? Obsidian, hey, I'm trying to introduce them to having fun. Old man, roll me perception awareness. Uh, yeah, perception awareness. Yes. Not that great, but okay. Obsidian roll me perception awareness. <laughs> Why do you do this to me? Because it's funny. 
Oh, let me just double check that I, this is this is the thing. This is the roll. Yes, okay. The common roll. Whoa, uh, willpower. <laughs> I will tell you a botch is it's not dangerous. I it's one year. I will tell you a botch is not long term dangerous here. So <laughs> it's funnier for me not. Okay, so Obsidian hears and sees nothing out of the usual at all. Just is just like oh god, old man. Well, whatever. Back to trying to like recommand the situation and be normal and fine. Old man. Mm hmm. About five seconds after it's too late to hear anything about it, realize that the ambient drone of the bees and the hives and the fields nearby is getting louder. Fast. I can't oh, fucking what? believe you. Gonna sting you. me? I can't. I cannot believe you. I can't take you anywhere. Oh, this is Introduced by bees. What? You kidding me? You think that's gonna hurt? You think you you think bees can harm harm me? No, so, uh, for, no. For, for old man who was uh, you were present when I described these bees. These are the microwave bees. Ones that killed snake. These oh, are the bees like that the get on you and heat you up. Oh yeah, that's fine. The heat smothering bees. You're gonna die. So old man turns around and sees a cloud of. That's probably at least 10,000 bees. Hmm. Hmm. Well, good luck, bees. And then you are tackled full force by a swarm of bees that... You realize, wait a minute, hang on, that's not a normal amount of force behind a swarm of bees. That is bees, bees that have been... That is bees that have lifted. Hmm, small bees. <sighs> okay, question. Hmm? I can't, I, obviously that rule might have been, like, to get out of the way or something. Do mm. I realize the bees are coming before they hit old man? Oh, no, they're hitting you two. Oh, okay. My intention was to get in the way, but alright, yeah, sure, why not? Your heat resistance means that, uh... Well, yeah, <laughs> that's I'm fine. What I'm, saying. The I'm 100% hit, fine. The botch means that you are also being hit by collateral bees, but also you don't care. I'm fire aspect, I don't give a shit. I walked up to the god bone. Collateral bees is a good phrase. So, both of you are just smacked by this tidal wave of bees and smashed into each other, and old man is being all smug of like, oh, what are they going to do, sting me? And then old man starts to feel very hot. And old man's like, oh, what are they going to do, make me feel hot? And then you remember that copper is a very heat-conductive metal that has a low melting temperature. Uh, no, it doesn't. Copper is uh, still a reasonably high melting temperature. Tain is the one that has a lower mel melting temp. Right. My point is that you have pissed off supernaturally enhanced bees that will make you hot and you are made of metal. Mm -hmm. Melting point of copper is still well over 1000 degrees Celsius. Hey, look, extol the virtues of copper later. What are you going to do about these fucking bees? Uh, I don't know. I'm mainly going to just go ahead and take it, I suppose. Like, sure, they're magically enhanced. By well, all man, means, also magically they, enhanced. So I, I don't know what they could even... possibly actually do to me. Sting you hey, viciously, Darren? Through copper skin? What are they gonna do? Like sting is... me viciously? They're gonna warm me up? All right, sure. Is once he gets to a certain degree, the heat of old man would that constitute as a source of fire aspect? Yes. Okay. Once old man's skin gets to a temperature enough that I can do it, I'm going to pull the heat out of old man's skin to create a sword that I immediately jab into the ground. Cool, Gross. the bees keep going. Just grab okay. the heat from I've the bees. I've got a question for old man. I can keep doing this yes. like at least ten times. You've got copper skin. What about your insides? Yeah, that's uh, uh, that's the actual here. Uh, hey, old man, I know this is a good pool for you, and you should be glad it is. Uh, stamina resilience, please. Uh, sure. Stamina resistance. Where's old, man, uh, old man just dies to bees. 
Can we say that because I'm trying to dampen it, this is an easier check for him? <laughs> yeah. I uh, will spend one additional willpower for four successes. Okay, and with the difficulty threshold lowered by you assisting, uh, you are taking two lethal damage as you literally begin your organs start to overheat and, like, be in a super fever that is throwing off your internal alchemy, and hey, wait, hold on, that means that your body stops working in its very delicate balance and, oh no, er oh, there goes everything, oh fuck. I'm pretty sure I actually still don't take any penalties from that because of uh, various, like, parts of soul, uh, the soul elixir. Mm -hmm. Like deprivation. You are, you are still now penalties. taking at least two lethal damage around until you solve this. Hmm. Uh. Well. Um. Hmm. I don't oh. have a way to make smoke. Oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. Don't he's just going to explode. In, he's just going to explode into birds. That is the easy way out of this. Yes. Mm, I don't know if it is. Because then your birds covered in bees. Just because your birds doesn't mean the, the bees aren't. Yeah, covering each individual you. bird could probably be murdered by a ball of bees. Faster. Yep. You wouldn't have to have mist form, would you? No. <laughs> mist. Honestly, fast. he's mainly just going to go and stand there until the bees calm down. What I'm telling you is they're going to kill you if you don't do something. Yes, that is the thing. All right, fine. Here. I guess I'll go ahead and kill the bees then. Uh, repose would... Uh... It established that he was responding to uh, the, the noise and commotion. He would, he would be asking to one of the people standing at safe distance. Is, is there usually a thing you do when when this arises? One of the bird folk looks around, just kind of in a very confused panic. I was first there was a loud noise, and then one of your friends is covered in bees, and there wasn't a problem, but now there is, and oh well. It, uh, There's a man covered in bees. The table that we are next to that they were playing Mahjong on is it made of wood. There's plenty of wooden sticks on it. Alright. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something to start a campfire-ish sort of thing with. I okay, will throw I would say that I would say the I would say that hmm? I, I will throw one uh, bit of criticism your way here. Allowing the, the, the fun st uh, stupid things to, to go down uh, deliberately to only have uh, these super bees that are apparently very easily capable of killing me is not exactly very fun. They're, they're dealing two damage around. You have some amount of action time That's to try to rounds. figure out how to unbees. I also gave you several warnings, but yeah, no, I, I understand. I, I, so, I don't want to have to kill the bees, but I guess I could just, uh, you know, do another clap and take them out. So, what would my solution here... For I, was going to, I was going to say that the pile of free cheese sticks for gambling was going to be enough to get the smoke off, and also combined with the anima banner, and also assistance from what Repose was just going to get somebody to help, was going to go grab a torch as well. Like, you are also in the woods. You are surrounded by wood. One second. Miss have even tied. Yeah, that was the other solution. Hey, this is a knockout spell, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. yeah, there you go. Bees go to sleep. Um, and then as soon as I realize what old wait, do I have to make a save? No, you 
you are you have got your fire anima, so like they can't actually Oh, not for that against the mists. I still fail to see how these could actually hurt me. You have copper skin, you don't have copper Move on from the bees. You're yeah, on like, fire. Is... But bees. And I'm, I don't take damage from fire. What is that from? Like, genuinely, I don't know where that's Because from. it can't get through hardness or, uh, or soak or anything like that. The lethal damage uh, caused by it is still far too low to get through it. Okay, that may have been a misinterpretation of the mechanics on that. Like, genuinely. So... Rather than having this be a lethal threat, I would have this be like a deeply uncomfortable threat then. Walk that back. Oh, I'll be right back. The intention here was my idea was you have metal conductive skin and internal normal intestines and guts. You are now a microwave chamber. Uh, so the damage inflicted by environmental hazards is measured in dice. Oh. So the idea would be hardness sets a minimum intensity that is necessary to harm you. And then if it is, if it exceeds that, then you throw some bones. Yeah, and resting hardness is eight because of invulnerable skin of bronze. So yeah, that would not be enough. Because, like, Magma's, like, six or seven or something. Yeah, yeah, Doc's right. I was going off of what I remembered, and I was wrong. No, I haven't those guys. All right, I have returned. Right, so it was brought up how the actual environmental hazard mechanics work, and I completely forgot how they worked and over, like, overballed their lethality compared to the resting hardness you have. So yeah, you're totally right. You would not be taking actual damage from this. That's and I what I thought. Yeah, soul men will yeah. literally actually just stand there, being covered by bees, waiting for them to do something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just let That's... them relax and get uh, get over it, because they will eventually. And because he doesn't want to hurt them. God, yeah. Okay. So two points. Number one, Ark and Black is very correct that I am operating under the assumption that I usually play World of Darkness and fire and fire adjacent abilities are something that you almost never get a way of getting out of. And one Baron's idea is also great. I, having everybody freak out and massively overreact, this old man is just sitting there like, no, it's fine. That's what I've been. Yeah, that's the assumption I've been going off the whole time. Yeah, and I apologize. That was just lapse of me mechanical memory on my part. Propose is still asking about if the, if the locals have any responses to bees, and then once usually someone they... starts to react, just hold them back. No, 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 wait. Uh, usually it is either to grab a torch and waft the smoke, or like, grab some bellows and pull out of any given like, kiln or stove. And then blow the smoke that way. Like, the and usual then... way of flying smoke. Yeah, so folks... If they then start to you know, go through the motions of being, of actually going to try to insist old assist old man, just just kind of stop them and quietly explain that uh, the no, old no, man is uh, unfond of receiving help. And hold on, nope, it's okay. <laughs> Approaching me is probably more dangerous than trying to help. He so, says, "Do a mouthful of bees," and then occasionally spitting a couple out as they try to get in there. Ah, it's all right. So would also with co covered in bees. <laughs> this is confusing. Don't worry. I understand. He's weird. Old man is odd. <laughs> While also covered in a similarly large ball of bees. Do not worry about me as I am of the fire. This is nothing. Says the giant ball of bees. With obsidian's arm sticking out of it. So with mechanically how it works, it feels for a moment like the insides are about to start boiling, but you are able to radiate enough heat outward and manage your own yeah. internal energy but to... The, uh, hmm? the, the dispute here. Uh, Mechanics-wise, say how big of a hazard are these bees? I would say probably, like, bonfire. 
which is not enough for old man. Yeah, so these bees are a four lethal per round, difficulty five. Which, Source of damage and heat. Having a resting hardness of eight, old man completely ignores. Mm hmm. And with one moat, um, newbie can just ignore mundane heat sources. So, it is one of the situations where it's just like, it is deeply uncomfortable for old man, it is not causing lasting damage for old man. And, and what's deep uncomfortable, but rather my normal day-to-day? -day? It, it takes... It takes about five minutes for the bees to start leaving Obsidian alone. It takes the better part of a half hour before the last lingering sets of bees are just like, oh, fucking, this, this, this weird skin is so hot, why isn't he falling over? And just finally giving up and being like, fine, whatever. On the other hand, the now slightly, uh, like, light glow that I have to my skin is very handsome. You have a very slight heat shimmer off of the metal, yes. You actually kind of worked out some of the wrinkles. Right. <laughs> Turn around. All right, well, how about you try and play, uh, play me in a game of Mahjong now? God. As he immediately goes back to doing what he was doing before. Only if you play Minefield. I can't. Well, who falls that? I suppose we'll usher some local up to within, you know, probing distance of old man as he carries on a conversation he has had about various metals and metal bearing stones. There's definitely an attack that he would have had for uh, thinking about novelties is. Just kind of, you know, just, even just having, like, w one or two metal things around. That could be nice. Metals, are, 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 do you know how many rocks just have metal hiding in them? <laughs> you can just find chunks of copper. Yes, like this stuff, but less flappy. Like, it, like him, but... Ugh. Like him, but not skin. It's quite a lot less gross, normally. And actually, hold, believe it or not, that's that's the thing that's going to distract them into talking about the metal instead. Instead of trying to uh, goad them into playing. Yeah, as, uh, I, I, as I, because this image will not leave my head after it's being posted. Old man has been temporarily buffed into smoothness by the bee vibrations. Incredible. He's now been annealed, everyone. Smooth man. Smooth man. The natural weirdness of the skin will still take over soon, but now it is just really uncomfortably smooth, man. I suppose it's thinking of inviting any locals who could spare the time to go prospecting. Have you really looked at the rocks that you live near? Mm hmm kind of rocks that you got up here in the wetland. So, with that all in mind, and with the festival prep on the horizon and the rest of the stuff, and it being 11.45 where I am, I think I might call it here for the night. And next time, festival preparations? Festival? Maybe Bear wakes up, maybe not. Bears area? Bears area. Next time.